Welcome to Wednesday Comics. Brought to you by RootsOfTheSwampThing.com and Supercon 2018 Return of the Con. Keep turning those pages. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. To my right, we have the Beast himself. Alex, how you doing? Hello, everyone. You're very vicious. We'll talk about that later. And to my left, we have Derek James, uh, the dimension jumping uh, sideways man of the hour. Garrett? Sideways. Hey, I'm good. What's up? No one asked you how you were. Well, I just I implied that you thought I would want to. I don't know. <laughs> no one cares. I think, it's, I think it did say how are you doing. You did. I said, Garrett, how you doing? Oh, yeah, then that makes oh. you the fucking dick, Alex. Oh, well, sounds about right. And I am the man out of time, Steve Rogers. How you doing? We'll talk about that later too. I guess. Uh, are you gonna spill on yourself this it's week, Mark? It's weird that you just asked how you're doing. Hey, I work. I was drinking something, spilling myself. Of course, it just it just happens. You know, what I figured out <laughs> it is. It's so dumb. Does he know that he's wearing a captain's shirt right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you do know that. Yeah. Is that okay? I just thought you were like, oh, this book, sweet, got it. No, so we're in the cat. Watch him drip. Uh, we'll talk about Black Panther today. We uh, we went to go see it t- earlier today, so uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. We we'll also have a guest coming on with us later, but uh, let's talk about some free talk. Do we agree on what to talk? Nope. <laughs> let's talk about really quick, just for a second, this Incredibles two trailer. Uh, since you brought it up, this whole thing. Yes. Does, whoa. Alex wow. didn't see it. And you're a fan of the Incredibles? I've only seen it once. What? Yeah. Oh, it was, How it was old my are you? Favorite you when, movie. Did you shut up. I, did it's you not see my it favorite in, movie. Mine's Beauty and the Beast. So there. <laughs> Mr. Incredible would fucking punch How old was through that? the beast's face and still get with Belle. Like, oh, hey, you like I, this guy? <laughs> I'm way better. He's married. Elastic girl. Yeah. Yeah, well, he almost had a fling with uh, whatever the white-haired chick was. Yeah, I don't I think, think so. he wanted to fling with her. I think he was just they were using flirty. Her. Well, no, he was you, using her. What do you flirt with girls? Yeah, okay, I'm not married, well, he's single. So, <laughs> yeah, so f off, Alex. You're talking about your favorite movie of all times, Beauty and the Beast, the remake, the a live action, of course. Emma, Emma Watson. Oof. That was a good that was movie. a great movie. That was pretty yeah, good. So that's great. I mean, there's some problems with it, but it's pretty good. What was the problems? The fight scenes were stupid. A, what is a beast supposed to know martial arts? No, I'm saying that when you watch the, the animated movie, he actually fights. It's less of, I'm just going to wander around and try to get away. Suplex the shit out of him. I don't away. remember the animated one having good fight sequences. Yeah, oh, I really? thought it was just them like bulldozing into like, each yeah, other. Yeah, they just bulldoze and throw each other around. Oh, no. Then you guys were watching the wrong movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were watching the wrong movie. This sounds the wrong like some play you saw where they had oh, a coordinated you're right. fight. I, I uh, went down to Chinatown. I got the the rip off. So that's, that's how I was watching Beauty and the Monster. That's how I was watching. <laughs> but Incredibles two. Did you, you saw the teaser trailer? I know, I watched the teaser trailer. But what's the teaser trailer? The it one take, I the it, one I've seen is that he's he lifts up Jack and blows off his hair. No, that's no, a teaser. That's just okay. a teaser it's for teaser the trailer. trailer, right? Okay. Um, this one picks up. You gotta see the whole gang. Um, uh, you hear uh, you don't really hear Vi- uh, what's the daughter's name? Violet. Violet. Is it Violet? Yeah, you don't get to hear her talk very much. You hear like, um. Running boy, I can't even. <laughs> I don't need to watch it. Dash. Running man, dash, and then Frozone's in it. Um, but it seems like that uh, Mister Incredible's gonna be taking care of the whole family while Elastigirl or Last yeah, Woman. The story is. seems like a guy comes back. He's like, I want to make heroes heroes again, and I want to make Elastigirl like I want to back her and pay for her to be a hero again because they obviously don't have money to be heroes. And uh, Mister Incredible, he doesn't want him though, and so Mister Incredible has to stay behind and take care of the kids. Hmm. So it's kind of like a, a role reversal. They're saying like the woman goes off to work, the dad stays home. The movie takes place in the 60s, obviously. So they're dealing with that kind of dynamic when women started being in the workplace more and this guy's being a stay at home dad, even though he knows he has potential to be more. So what, what, is, gonna be weird? what is really weird is that it, like oh. the first movie came out 10 years ago and Jack Jack's still a baby. That's like, to me, that's just kind of like. Yeah, but it takes place my brain right at the it. end of the last movie. Yeah, right, exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying, but it's been 10 years since the actual physical release of that movie. What do you guys think? Because it is, like you said, it's been 10 years, but it does take place right after that movie ends. It's not going to be that dated because it takes place in 1962. So it's not, it's already in, like, a, uh, it's already kind of like in a time capsule back then. Right. Uh, 
Do you think it's going to lose anything by picking up the story right where it is and that moving it forward? I don't think so. I watched that trailer and my excitement was the same yeah. level as when I watched that first one. I think so. I like, yeah. Go what ahead. excites you guys about Incredibles? It's great. It's one of my it, favorite movies. It's hilarious. There's superheroes. Out of, There's like a good plot. Out of animated movies, I would say it's probably uh, top three. Yeah. Animated movie. Have you not? I don't know if you watched it fully. I've watched that movie watched like it, 20 but I, times. But yeah. I've watched it when I, I was, was obsessed. 10 years ago. We all worked in, in a place before, and I worked in a video re- rental section of that place, and we had Incredibles, and I played yeah. it every single time I worked for like at least three months. Nope. I've, I think I've only seen it maybe twice. Even to listen you to the to score. It. Yeah, the score is By great. Michael Giacchino, who recently tweeted that he started to work on the score for two. Uh, the score itself, I even listen to it all the time. Oh. I can't wait until I watch this and go, yeah. Still don't care. I don't think that's the case, especially when you're about to have a child. You're gonna love that movie. But is it, but you make it seem like I'm you know rough and gruff all the time that I don't like kids shows. No, I just, I it's probably the shows. first time you watched it. That's you a, just, it's been a long. It time. It is very surprising you don't like that. And say, I mean, I've, I mean, I know they. What do you uh, give it out of ten? Well, right now I'm going to give it a one because <laughs> I don't remember watching. I mean, I remember bits and pieces of this movie. You watched it. You were too cool for school or some high school kid acting like you didn't like new been, stuff. Oh, I like 2D animation, not 3D. Oh, wait. I know what it was. I was 18 and I was busy in school doing plays and working and, you know, not really having a life. Buy so. this thing Blu-ray. I give it 10. And it's, watch it. It's amazing. You can buy it for like five bucks. Well, I already own it on DVD, so. What the you hell? You own it? You own I it and you re it? You watched it, it once. No. Why mm. even own it then? If you don't even, if it's a one out of ten, and you wouldn't buy. You pay money for it. No, it's a gift. You're like those morons. So somebody was Bay like, "This is in Alex's wheelhouse," and yet, okay, I was 16. <laughs> I thought you were. I was five ago. watching this movie. Going, oh, this is the coolest thing I've I, ever. I thought seen. a second ago you said you're 18. I was not five. Well, 16, 17, 18. They're around the same age, aren't they? Not in high school. It's very big gaps. Sophomore. I was amazing. Know. No matter what age I was in high school, so it didn't matter. You were in plays. Yeah, you've gone to them. I know, just kidding. What play? <clears throat> I was on uh, Flowers in, Valdron? Fiddler on the Roof. What was yours? Jungle Book. You were in Flowers? Yeah, Flowers for Algernon. I didn't know what the last word was. Were you, you said. Algernon? Damn, I was the mouse that got killed. That's no. right. I was the dad. Oh. They practiced on him and then. Nice. Now else. we're going to beat you. Somebody with actual talent got the job. <laughs> now the reverse intelligence makes sense. He played an old man, though, in Fiddler on the Roof, and there was never a time more that I felt he. Filled that role perfectly. I, you know what? I that was my first play. Embraced it. Number one. You know how he wore a wig for that show, correct? And wore a fake beard. He wore a fake beard and it was like all white. Kind of looks like it is right now. So you could have just waited five years yeah, he, and you would have had the hair. I've never it. gotten that beard. You though. want to go back? I should show you that picture of the beard. This beard is like down to my nipples. Well, not the beard, wow. obviously, but you can the hair. You can the hair do. I can do without. Yeah. So let's go back now. Let's pitch the Fiddler chest. Two: Return of the Fed. <laughs> Return of the Fed. Of course. What's the main character's name? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think you were in it. <laughs> well, I didn't have well, a name. Clearly, his ability to remember things back then. I was a papa. Shit. Yeah, so. I was going to say what happened between sixteen and eighteen. It seems like you were in a hiatus with his memory. Yeah. I thought you would steal trap. Were those of the lost years? Got rid of them. You oh. can never do a one of years type show because you don't remember your, those years. No, I. <laughs> You know the sad thing? That is true. Why are you blacking out these years? You're like sixteen, seventeen. I don't remember how old I am. You're steel trap. That's Dude, why you're I'm on this so show. busy. Shrooms. <laughs> well, I wasn't supposed to talk about it, but no, he's too high. I'm muting the beast and chocolate. That's why. Chocolate? Don't you love chocolate? No, nah, he loves Gaston. <laughs> you don't care about what's that the one. candy? Don't you, there's like a certain candy? Oh, oh those cow uh, tails. Um, cow tails, but it's, milk, it's milk duds. Oh, you know what's better than that is uh oh, what do they call? I can't think of it. They're uh fuck. I don't know those. It's are. just like cow tails. It's just like it, but they're like little Blue tips. No. Werther's? No. They're like little rectangles, chocolate with marshmallow nougat in the middle. Heifer halves. Oh, um, Charleston Chews. Charleston Chews. What'd you just say? Heifer halves. Heifer halves. <laughs> what, a heifer's a cow? A, yeah. mm-hmm. I didn't say anything. <laughs> it's a cow, isn't it's it, a, Alex? It's a cow. Are you looking at me like I'm, I'm, like I'm swearing over here? <laughs> You know, I like how we didn't really talk much. About, I guess we did. We got on to attacking me about Incredibles. That's right. Because I can't believe, like, if there was anybody in this world that was going to be like, they love that movie, it would have been you. I think what well, animated. I, it's about superheroes. I really do probably need to watch it again. Because I mean, oh. it, it's not against, I mean, I do love watching kids shows. One of my favorite shows is the 1980s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But it's been so long since I've watched this movie that it's never been on my that wheelhouse. I can't even touch this. What about that concert film? You like that? Coming out of our shells? God, that was horrible. 
<laughs> no, they had some glitter on their face, though. So horrible. So here's here's the takeaway from this right now, and then we can move on to these uh, books. Hey, I, want, I want to get uh, I want some people out on Twitter to tell me, Alex, watch this movie. Uh, at, you know you hate everything, uh, but watch this movie. Yeah, that's exactly what we have to do. At Alex Pastrell, tell him how good that movie is. 605-215-1849. And if it's from Garrett, I won't watch it. <laughs> 605-215-1849. Leave him a voicemail and berate him over the air. We'll play it next week and uh, enjoy ourselves. Try to be a little nice. Don't hurt my feelings because I'll cry on the on Also, the I don't know if you like Milk Duds, too. Nobody likes Milk Duds. I love Milk Duds. They're like the worst candy that you can buy. Dude, I've got like hyena jaw strength it's in like, doing those. It's nah, like, those little good and plenty black that's what I was gonna say. It's like crap. that and Milk Duds. Good like, and, that's a close second. Good and plenty. Tootsie Rolls, like plain Tootsie Rolls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are too. Yeah. What's a that's like that? There's that chalky kind of candy that comes like in that clear kind of wrapper. It looks Smarties? old school. No, it looks old school. They're bigger than Smarties. Uh, like quarter like size. the bottle cap type things. Yeah, those suck too. Sprees. <laughs> those are horrible. Sprees, Not Sprees. Sprees are pretty Sprees good. Sprees are pretty good. Roots of the Swamp Thing dot com. Your definitive online source for all things Swamp Thing. Uh, Holland Files number two is out. Garrett, how is it? Holland Files two was awesome. A lot of cool like images that you haven't got to see in Holland Files number one. So. Definitely looking forward to finishing this bad boy. And that's not the only thing. If you want to learn more about Swamp Thing, Alex, where would you go? You're going to go to rootsoftheswampthing.com. Make sure you stay in touch at rootsoftheswampthing.com on Twitter at DC World Swampy, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Roots of the Swamp Thing. Well, uh, some comics came out this week on Valentine's Day. Uh, you know what we did. We all ditched our significant others and uh, joined Garrett and read some comics together. That was our <laughs> love day. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, <laughs> the first one we read was Dark Knight's Rising, the... Uh, well, it's called Dark Knight's Rising? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I ever watched that movie. The Wild Hunt, number one, that is uh, Scott Snyder, Grant Morris, and James Tinian, the fourth, and Joshua Williamson. Artist Howard Porter, Jorge Jimenez, Doug Minky with Jaime, Jaime Mendoza. Colors by Hi-Fi, Alejandro Sanchez, and Will Quintana. Uh, this is a story, a couple of stories. They kind of interweave throughout it. We got Detective Chimp as the main overall story, I think. We have uh, Flash and Cyborg. Is that who it is? Yep. Fighting off some people, and he fights the uh, Flash from the other negative realm. What's his? What's that Flash's name? Reverse Flash. No, no Reverse, Red Death. Uh, Red, Red Death. Death, right. Fighting him. We have this weird thing on Black Hack Island. Didn't understand that part. And we have something with uh, Raven, right? Yep. So those are the four stories that we have in this book. Let me just ask you guys a question. This is a Dark Knight or whatever the, the hell tie-in. it's called. Metal, Metal tie-in. This is right on the cover. Um, that even though this is called Dark Knights and this is called Dark Knights with a K. Was this, let's say first, was this worth picking up if you're getting the main series? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. No, this was, it, in all honesty, it didn't even make me think of Wild Hunt, like the writers from, I don't know if it's Norse mythology or what mythology they're from, but it's a, a group of dead writers hunting down people. That's what I thought this really was. Uh, the cover, I was all excited, thinking, "Oh my gosh, these <laughs> these other Batman got a hold of some horses and are riding them around." Awesome. Uh, I don't think you really need to get this book to tie into anything because I didn't even feel like it really tied in much. I feel like it tied in, but it's more explaining like things in the background. Like it's really heavy in mythology, like super heavy. And like if you don't know anything about like DC lore or anything like that, you're gonna hate this book. I don't remember them being on a spaceship or a, a harmonic ship. That is the only issue I have with this whole thing is that I don't remember any of this going on. Did I miss something? Was this in Justice League or some tie in that I haven't been reading? I don't I didn't think so. I thought we were getting all the tie ins. I think this is its own thing that it just starts in this. It just starts. Yeah. The Detective Chimp part I enjoy the most because it wasn't something that it started from the beginning and God, we got a conclusion out of it. We got uh, last page where a bunch of t- he went to the DC universe, Detective Chimp universe, the fifty third, fifty third, and there's a bunch of monks, monkeys, and uh, not monks. <laughs> you think that they have a monk on that planet? <laughs> they the might. Chimps. They might do. Uh, they might. Uh, they come over. We have Batman Chimp. We have a Flash Chimp. We have a giant Superman Chimp. Superman I think. Chimp. And they're coming. They're going to save the universe, they say. You ready, uh, people? Oh, that's the Superman one. Remember we had a question on this? He appeared in Superman. What was the name of the chimp? That's him. Yeah. Um. So, like, that for me was... that was the you think that was the Grant Morrison part? Yeah, probably. Detective Chimp? That's what I think, too. That's what I think, too. It was a multiversity. He was Detective Chimp all over the place. Uh, You know how I know I think it's Grant Morrison? I think I, I recognize his writing. And Grant Morrison's writing is, I feel confused... Yet I understand what's going on, if that makes any sense. 
uh, to be fair, the detective chimp thing was the most upfront thing in this book. But there's a lot of mythology, and like there's right. a lot of like things being thrown at you, references mythology, and but I never feel like the story's being missed, and that's what Grant Morrison does great. I think I might be mistaken; it might be somebody else. All the rest of the stuff, I felt like I was missing something. Yeah, and uh, it had some. It had some of it had great art. How reporters part was great. Um, uh, Jorge Jimenez. Yeah, all of it's good, but I never like. I was like, "What's going on? Did I miss something?" So, it, it, yeah, it's like they were going to do another mini series, and they decided, "Well, we got to kind of wrap this thing up," and they did this instead. Um, I don't know. I don't think it worked well. It, it was kind of like an annual in, in a sense, but I think there was so many things they were trying to accomplish with this issue that it just didn't really come off as what they were hoping for. Like I, I got it. Cause like, you know, they're trying to find the house of heroes and things like that. Um, but yeah, geez, it's very confusing. But this kind of seemed to me as just a money grab using the metal tie in or the metal, uh, limited series to go, Hey, you know, you get this book, you get a little bit of extra, information yeah maybe in issue six it's going to all wrap up nicely in a bow and everything's going to be excuse me explained nicely but i just i i struggled to get through this issue i feel like it was kind of like a multiversity point five basically to explain the dark multiverse yeah okay like, maybe that's it is that it's 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 tying into stuff like you said mythology wise that i don't read i haven't read i mean i'm not necessarily new to comics but i haven't read any of the new the pre new 52 stuff. So I don't know. I gave this book for me was not, was not strong. It was a, like a, a seven for me. Yeah. I, I'm at a seven. I think obviously the guy was more excited for it because Grant Morrison was on it. And I feel like he did do the te- detective chimp story. Um, but if he didn't, whatever parts he, I mean, I thought the evil Joker, the Batman who laughs yeah. really strong in this issue. If you just knew what the fuck he was saying. I think that's one thing is that he talks, he, he almost seems like a, a mix of Riddler, Batman, Joker. Yeah. Everything he says is what? I don't even know how any of his followers can understand what he's talking about. And can we stop please with the red text and black background? I can barely read it. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else, like if it's just my eyes or what, but like, I'm almost like, what is it? Like you need strong light to read that. If you read it in yep. any kind of low light, you cannot see what is going on. Everything else is fine. But that I like, I can't barely read. And like, it's like, it makes it more confusing because of the way that it's written. And just like, I don't know. I, I, I've never enjoyed that there's an issue of Scott Snyder's Batman where he did that for some character, and even that I couldn't read. So, Well, I guess two more things I just remembered uh, seeing this. Uh, we get the Metal Men yeah. in this and kind of Red Tornado's background, um, and then also one of the uh, evil Batman dies. It's uh, Red Death. Red he F. becomes Gold Death, I guess. He becomes and Barry Allen, and becomes, then he dies. Yep. He gets killed. He dies kind of like... Um, Rorschach too, when, right? When blue, when uh, Doctor Manhattan kills him, so again a cloud of blue. He said that he dies because they he puts a bunch of little mini universes on him, and he kind of blows up. So maybe that's what Doctor Manhattan's doing when he does that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that part with the metal men too and Red Tornado, but I I include that in the dark Doctor Chimp, Doctor Chimp, Detective okay. Chimp part because he was in that part too. Oh right. yeah. Anything with the Chimp I liked. Right. Everything else was just probably Scott Snyder. Yeah, of the things I like the art, but the story I was like, what's going on? It wasn't even so much confusing, like, what's going on in this scene. I understood that. But, like, it had no context. It had no meaning. And it really didn't feel like it mattered at all because I didn't know, like, what happened before this, what's going to happen after this. I don't know. Well, I, I understood the issue fine. Yeah. I didn't understand how the issue tied into no, I have no clue everything where it previous. Yeah, if so, you read the solicit for this, there is none. It's just like, watch as the Dark Knight's Metal event takes you on the wild hunt. I think you're right, uh, uh, Garrett. I think it's supposed to actually be, like, an anthology, like, stories within this universe. But they've fallen so behind, and the main story is at a point right now where it's like, it still feels like it's like in the first act, that main story, that they're like, let's speed it up now. There's like something being like, oh, this is it. Like, we need to stop. And it seems like now they got help from the DC uh, Chimp Universe, and now, like, maybe that's what they need to win or something. I don't know. I am am really concerned on what issue six of Metal is going to bring. I think it's going to be good. No, I don't. I, so. I don't. No way. It's oversized too. This this whole series, like one, two, and three, pretty good. Uh, and then they they got delayed. So four and five, I don't know what I just read. And I, in all loving towards Scott and how he writes, 
I don't think he's going to seal this well at There's all. There's no way you can do it. There's no. It way. amazes me we were more more excited for metal than Doomsday Clock, uh, just because we were like, oh, Doomsday Clock. I'm not sure what we're going to get in metal. We kind of like. They were like, it's going to be like a Batman story turn up to 11. Like, it's going to be so crazy. And I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. It's going to be like a fun Batman story. But I think at this point, Doomsday Clock is a more focused story. Yeah. And, like, and it feels like that it's going at a pace that's great. And metal's all over the place. I don't know what's going on. And it doesn't seem like it's concerned with trying to help tell a focused story. Like, we're all over the place. Like, we'll be in one place for two seconds and then another place. And I don't see how anything fits. And it just feels like issue six is just going to be like all of a sudden, oh, you guys are all back together. I have to, oh, I have to, beat, I have to wrap it up and be done. You somehow beat all these guys and uh, now we're over. It reminds me of reading Dark Knight Strikes Back by <sighs> Frank Miller slash the second half of Dark Knight 3. You just, you're just reading it just to get it done with. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. Art's uh, good, though. Now, uh, Marvin, I think you talked about this This next book we're going to talk about may be a civil war for us. We'll find out. Uh, we've got Captain America, 698, Mark Wade, Chris Samney, kicking ass and taking names. I want to hear uh, this. I want to hear your guys' thoughts for this book because now I'm getting, I'm getting mixed reviews from you guys. I thought it was horrible. It was like so boring and there were a couple cool parts, but... God, I've never been like this is the weakest issue of Sammy and Wade's run for me. And I've never like I was so excited for this issue. I'm like, okay. And then it was everything I didn't want it to be with story and like the art was fine. Um, but I was just like when I got into it, I was already bored. And then like halfway through it started being okay. Yeah. And by the end I was like, okay. Like I felt like I would want to drop this just based on this one issue i'm not going to yeah but i mean like if this is the consistency i was going to be getting from now on i would be dropping this book what about it was boring all the new characters like i don't like this is supposed to be a story focusing on captain america like that's what the whole thing that wade and sammy have been saying is and it like took a huge left turn and like i get you got it you can't do the same thing over and over again so they went propelled them into the future but i was like why but isn't a story about by the way i like this issue for anybody else yeah you can say uh, your opinion on why you like it but i feel like an issue that talks about what happens if there's no captain america and then you bring him back to see how the world is when he can't fight against the evil the evils of the uh those uh, people the fascists that it shows like how much needed captain america is needed because if he's not there this is what happens to america like people who have hate in their heart take over rather than people who fight for the people who can't fight for themselves. So when he comes back, he gets stolen by those people, and they they basically say, hey, uh, don't make a ruckus. Like, we are the oppressed. We are they. What do they call themselves? The other people are called the... Uh, I forgot what they call themselves, but... Like the benefactors or like the people or something like that? I forgot. Uh, benefactors sounded about right. And so, like, they're, we're, we're basically the poor or the weak. We don't. We can't fight for ourselves. And he's like, I'll fight for you. And they're like, no, it's better to just keep low key. And at a certain point, he's like, no, we have to fight. And they're like, yeah, you're right. We can't keep being oppressed. We're going to fight because it's been going back to that first issue of their arc. If you fight for the weak and you stand up for them, and you if you're strong enough, you'll stand up for them. And I think he's, it's taking that quote and living it in this issue. That's why I enjoyed it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, just... They're like obviously the one page splash page of Captain America was cool. Um, I don't know the story getting there. I don't think I think it just they did it in a weird way and it really took me out of it. And God, getting through this took me forever because I was just not. In, I wasn't. Nah, this didn't work for me. The art really works for me. I I do think the the out of time part of it does. I don't know. It did kind of take me away from what we have been building up to in these last three issues. Um, but there's this big, I think it's a one page spread of Captain taking, I wasn't listening. I was listening. I before. just said that. Yeah. Well, you hate it. Where he's like doing the, yeah, his big arm is, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Like the art, I do agree. It looks really good. Um, I'm actually more on the lines with Garrett that it just, the build that we've had for the last three issues, this isn't where I was expecting us to go. Like, I, I was know, expecting when he, when it he, to be a current right. story of him getting back into being Steve Rogers no longer trying to get over being a, a ghost of the evil Supreme Hyd- was a Hydra Supreme. Yeah. Like so I just, I, I don't know when he got frozen at the end of that issue. I was like, Oh, that'd be a cool thing to like 
give him flashbacks, like make him internally like, you know, think back to when he was frozen for a significant amount of time. Then they actually did the same thing that's already happened to him before. And I was like, really? Like, Not uh, really, though. So he got frozen. Yeah, he got frozen. And then years went by. Yeah, but how is it the same? But no, but like it's Captain the America had already been established. Frozen. But this Captain had been established has already stomped Captain so many was established things. before yeah, he got he's, frozen. Yeah, but he's, he's stomped so many more things. He's fought in aliens. He's fought not Nazis a bazillion times. He's stomped world domination. Where if he's not there, who will stand up for everybody else? Like I get what Marvin's saying that this yeah. is a different turn. It is different because like the first time he got frozen, he set an example that people followed. So when he came back, he was a hero to everybody because they're like, "I look up to you." They're the reason why we're I'm the, you're the reason why I'm a superhero, and they didn't st- they stopped the world from that happening. This time he's frozen in time, and they can't stop them, and the world gets taken over, or at least America. And he comes back, and he's like. This is what happened when people lose faith when they don't help each other out. And he comes back and says, "No, we're going to take a stand. We're going to." What does the last page say? I forget. We're going to kick some ass. That's all. <laughs> He's like, "We're going to take a stand. We're going to take back this country." I think he says. Right. Yep, we're going to take our country back. Like I said there were some good parts in it, but I do um, think it is though. If you read it, I, I'll agree on one point. There is like, at least in the first like. Uh, six pages seven pages there's a lot of politics talk there's a lot of things about like how the world is today in 2018 and how it becomes that way in 2015 or 2025 if you have nobody if you ever everybody's silent and doesn't stand up and i think it it's trying to make like an allegory of how times are today and how normal people need to stand up and say something rather than stand behind and let this happen to the world i think that's a little heavy-handed uh so it's not a it's not even like a 10 or a 9 for me it's an 8 but uh I didn't think it's still on par with what Cap and does. Cap does. It isn't on par, like you said, with those last two issues now. Well, it's, it, it, you're right. This is on par for a Captain book. But not with the last one. But, but, but not with Captain America. But not with this arc that people. we've been building right. up to. And that's the thing that gets me. And so for There's that reason, I, I think. I think. Oh, no, go ahead. I, I give it a five out of 10. Like I, there's some weird characters in this Yeah, book. there's some things that just Holy pulled crud. me out of there it. There were a lot of like. Well, they're supposed to be aliens, aliens or yeah. of the mutations fallout. or. Man, there's like a dog guy, a rat guy, uh, Russians. I just thought it was not a weird that they choice. look weird. Right. No, I think because yeah, that's because the radiation from the nukes. Yeah. They also like this thing like I mean they go without they make some uh, fake king instead of saying that it's the president that we currently have. Saying that at one point he like launched all the nukes and it fucking destroyed everything, yeah. and then the people who had uh, money are the ones who survived, who could get free, who could get safe water, who could go to places that weren't radiated. They're the people who survive and thrive because they're the 1%. You know, it's a lot, it's a lot of like, it is very heavy handed and that's why I don't give it a 10 or a nine. Uh, but I do think that, I mean, that's what a cap, somebody else so who I gave the first issue to thought it was really political and they really like it. Um, but I think that's what captain is. It's a political book. Like, even if you go back and read those stories, even though Ed Brubaker was good about mixing in a lot of ash- action, it is a lot of politics. I, and that's fine for it being politics, but when it's characters that I don't give a shit about telling me about politics, that's where I, I lose interest. But I mean, and, and not def- I, the nice thing that Captain does is that he doesn't care who you are. Yeah. It's what, what it's, it's, and I'm, not, I'm not fighting you on it. I'm just oh, saying that as, as the character Captain, you're think- right. We as readers don't. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> yeah, but the way- we 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 don't give a shit about these other characters. But Captain cares so much about the United States. Cares just so much about people that he's willing to fight tooth and nail and beat the shit out of everybody he has to to protect these people. Because there's, there's that panel where yeah, the kid is um is he stuck under something or he just no he, he has the he has a cap shirt. It's that kid, right? No, I didn't think it was that kid. I thought it was the kid on the... Oh, I thought she's like, just leave him alone. He's nobody. And Cap's like, that's the reason why we got to save him. No, it was someone else I thought. Oh, okay, maybe. I'll, let me look. I'll, I'll look quick. But he's... It's some kid that's sitting on the road, and then they, they end up killing him. Oh, And they're trying yeah. to stop Captain from getting in the way. Yeah. And she, yeah, then you're right. And they hold him back. And he's like, I have to save him. And she's like, he doesn't mean anything. Just let him... Uh, just leave him, and she and Cap's like that's the reason why we need to save him. Yeah, it was just just a random kid. It wasn't the kid in the the shirt. Yeah. So, but I uh, this this would probably be a six for me. I think a part is that I, the build up that this series had for me was we're we're living in America, the current America, and he's just trying to get back to his roots. 
this was a rooted book for Captain. I get that, but it's just not what I was expecting. So I'd give it a six. Um, but I'm I didn't give a rating for Rising. Uh, that was oh, a four. That was four for that you. That was a four. Oh yeah, did I give a rating? I said seven. You said seven. Yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> uh, next we have uh, Marvel Two and One: The Thing and the Human Torch, number three, uh, written by Chip Zarsky, with oh gosh, can't even read. Art by Valerio Shiti, and then the colorist Frank Martin. I don't know. Do- uh, this book is amazing. It's so good. It is. It, it's just yeah. called Fantastic Four. It, I mean, I know they're Reed and Sue aren't Fan, in it. But. Fantastic Four minus two. I could handle that title. Plus a doom. <laughs> Plus I think it's just be called Fantastic Four. They don't need to be all in yeah. it to be a Fantastic Four book. I have a feeling that maybe there's some sort of thing where they, they like, maybe they're just holding back for them all to be back to be called Fantastic Four, but I don't see why it wouldn't be called Fantastic Four. It really is a story about them. This issue is great. It, they go and meet um, who's that? What girl's name? Um, a the doctor, doctor, the scientist who they met in issue one of this. And I don't remember the meeting or in issue one. Me either, but it says in the editor's yeah. note of the F. So I went off of that um, to try to restore Johnny's powers. Uh, Hydro gets involved. Uh, doctor Doom is dealing with the Mad Thinker, being like, "Hey, you're stealing Reed's inventions because you're not smart enough. You're not creative enough to make these kind of inventions." So I know they're not yours, which for me was kind of like, I like Doom. That he respects Reed. He does respect Reed a lot. And he's like, no, these are Reed's inventions. Uh, I hate the guy, but I know that he's really smart and only he can make this and you didn't make this shit. So at the end of the comic, Matt Thinker's like, well, I'm going to become Reed Richardson. I, I like that this Doom, I don't even know if he's a good guy anymore. I think he's just, I, a, yeah. he, he's just a guy. He's, he's just a dick. I, I respect this Doom, by the way. This this is uh, not a Doom that I don't think is good or bad. He's doing what he wants to do. This is this is right. Doctor Doom, and it just depends just, if it's good or bad what he wants yep. to do. So, uh, the uh, thing in Johnny parts are great with Hydro. Um, Hercules, yes. Hercules. Oh yeah, I forgot. Hilarious, yes. was hilarious. Really the whole issue. That's the thing about Chip Starsky in this book that impresses me a lot is that it can go from being funny, but also he has moments that are like very heartfelt and be like. Yeah. And adventure parts are great. The action's great. So. Chip and Chip was writing um, what Spectacular Spider Man, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes. I struggled reading that book. This book, I I love how Chip is writing it. It is has its serious moments, has its funny moments. And the reveal you get on why Johnny's losing his powers, if I may spoil it, is that Ru, uh, Sue and Reed are gone, and He's all too four far them, away from them. They're not in the same as the universe. Or, Even things losing his powers, but he really didn't say anything. He just thought he was. He goes, weaker. I'm just. I feel like I'm getting weaker, but. I uh, I love the fact that the four of them are literally a team. They got them together. They just stayed together in order f- to keep them as strong as they were. And it makes sense. And I feel like um, I never read Spe- Spectacular Spider-Man, so I'm not sure. But uh, it does feel like Chip like loves these characters. So if they yeah. ever came back with Fantastic Four, I would like him to, to write it. Oh, I yeah, I, I like how, I like what you said, Marvin. He does handle the comedy really great, but he does handle the serious mm-hmm. moments too. And that's really you really need to be able to control that, especially with a team like we that's like a family. Literally get literally get a joke about Hydro being like, "No, you can leave through the fucking toilets," <laughs> and then it cuts to that part where he she explains the powers, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we do need to be together," and it goes from a toilet joke. To a joke about, or not a joke, but like a, a thing being like, you need your family. Yeah, I think what's the what's the word that he, she says to Hydro Man? That's like she said, "Good people you, leave through the front yeah, door. Good patients go through the front. You can leave through the back." That's great. And she shows him the toilet, and uh, he's like, "Water's water." <laughs> so it's really great, actually. Uh, what else? What's other book you have? Lazarus. No, oh, it, it is one of my favorite books of the week, and I actually think it's up there with. Uh, it's very fun. The adventure is very fun. And it has great moments like that one we just talked about my family. So that's like when a Fantastic Four would come back, that book is an adventure book. It's supposed to be anyway. So I don't know. People usually write it kind of weird. Um, if it comes back, I would like them to write it. So it actually makes me excited. I really love this book. Like it, it, Garrett's been saying for weeks and weeks, Marvel has not been pushing this thing as a Fantastic Four book or even right. as like, hey, guys, if you were interested in like what happened to him, read this book. It just seems like for them, this seems like a, like a side book that like a little side mini series. Like I feel like they think this is like a mini series that's gonna just be a little fun thing for like four issues. But it still seems like there's a lot of things that are leading to Fantastic Four coming back. Yeah. To me, this is a book that is like that underlying what the whole Marvel universe should be based off of. Is not even not that everyone has to team up to get uh Sue and Reed back. But it's just nice that this book is just so focused. 
that it doesn't have to deal with everybody else's garbage. Yeah. I would love to see this book be at least 20 issues before Rue. Uh, Ru- I want to keep calling Rue, and that's not right. Sue and Reed before they show up. Just I that. um I agree with you. It doesn't have to tie into anything or anything like that. And actually, the part that made me the most angry, it's not the issue, actually. It's that last page at the very end when it's part of that Wolverine. Where is he? I actually like that. You that was kind of cool. I've been like how he comes. Oh, you've been it's skipping? Hi- Why? It involves Hydro. Hydro shows up in the lake and Wolverine's there. He's like, you made a bad choice, Bob, and pull through those. I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, I like I look through him to see what it is, but I don't read it. I mean, it's Hydro Man's in the swampy, shitty water. Yeah, it's just like a fun little Easter egg. What do you call those? Waiting pools? Pretty much. Yeah. Shows up in the a cesspool. Show up. I give this a nine. This yep. is great. Yeah, nine as well. Nine. The only thing that stops it from getting a ten is that just it uh this issue specifically, um, like since it was all it all took place like in that one setting, for me it felt kind of small. And I feel like this book is felt bigger before. And uh I enjoyed it, but it I like I think I'm more interested I'm like I I like that they found out the power thing. But uh you know what? Maybe I'll give it a ten. Because actually there I can't really think I wanna be I wanna say I do want it to like move on and let's go find Reed and Sue, but that's not the book's fault. It's gotta set that up first, so it's it's gonna cause a lot of uh problems with at least for Ben and Johnny, because Ben is under the impression that Sue and Reed are dead, where Johnny is not. So he's still gonna have to cross that bridge telling him like, hey, like this whole the whole point of this thing wasn't really because we think Sue and Reed are alive. It's more so that you'd get your powers back. But now that we know we need them, I don't feel so bad for lying to you. Kind of my thing. my hope is that this is what like a Batman 40 would be between Wonder Woman and Batman is where when one starts to feel weak, start feeling faint, is getting fatigued, the other one's like, bro, I got you. We're together. That's what I want from this book. Yeah. Uh, Black Monday Murders. Did you get read? Yeah. Nine. Nine. Black Monday Murders number eight. It says Jonathan Hickman, Tom Coker, um, February 2018. This issue came out. The last issue before that. Who knows? October, probably. Uh, this issue um, and uh, starts right where the other one ended. We had, uh, I, don't, I can't tell you what happened. I do know in my head, but I can't explain it. They went down to some sort of area. The guy was like, wanted to know the truth. He told him the truth and somehow to sacrifice another guy to learn Mammon the truth. Mammon told detective thomas the truth about how the scales work and things like that sort of um obviously he doesn't give you all the answers but in the in doing so because of getting to meet with mammon the price was taking the life of the professor that he was with oh yeah okay so on this um we meet with uh rothschild mrs rothschild and the uh victor is his name yep yep victor ernesto and yeah. they basically, he's like, hey, I did kill your brother. I ate all his blood. That's how I got half your uh, family's power. And then she's basically, he's basically like, challenge me. And if you can, if you want to kill me, then you can take it back. And we uh, cut two. His head's cut off. <laughs> like, it was pretty cool. Well, they, do, they do a battle of the scales, which is where they're in this like alternate dimension where yeah. the sponsor for the Rothschilds and sponsor, well, Victor chooses himself to fight their sponsor. Like duke it out in this alternate dimension that could last eons if it needed to. We don't know. And she chooses the her friend, the uh, all white lady, and uh, she wins. So she get hands for Mrs. Rothschild the guy's heart. She eats it. Great panel, but uh, great page by the way when she's eating that heart. And yeah, it looks kind of tasty. Man, <laughs> they made Marvin hungry. <laughs> it did make me. I mean, <laughs> the way you draw, like the way she's eating it, you, you kind of like, oh well. It looks like it's juicy and tasty. I don't think I've ever ate anything like that and felt as satisfied as she looks in that. I, uh, I eat turkey hearts for Thanksgiving. It's great. Are you serious? Serious. I want to learn a lot about Alex this, issue, this episode. <laughs> um, and then we cut to the detective. Goes and meets Mr. Rothschild and was like, hey, by the way, I, we figured out it was Victor. I can't prove it. I have no evidence. I just wanted to let you know that it is him, though. I know. Like, he can't tell her, hey, revisit this guy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> he fucking told me. Um and uh but we can't find him he's he, the earth swallowed him up and she obviously knows what happened to him and he knows how he figured it out but they don't want to tell each other and he's like i just want to know like he's trying to he basically asked her point blake what's going on i don't understand and she goes that's not the real question you want to ask me what's the real question and he's like i want in and it ends with them being like okay oh. detectives in he turned I'm bad excited. i'm excited for the next issue but is I he undercover or is he might be yeah, or is he but straight then, up? 
we learned in the first couple issue issues he's into this kind of occult stuff. So maybe somewhere along the line, he was like, hey, better to join them than to deal with all this. We'll see, though. It is very interesting to me, and I want to get you guys' take on this. We have, like I said at the beginning of this review, what the last one to come out for at least three, four months, I think. I'm guessing almost September. I'm going to look it up August. when I, after I ask you guys this question. Um, did you feel lost at all, or did you feel like, oh, I kind of understand what's going on? I, I jumped right back into this book. I almost Same. didn't need to know what happened. I was just enthralled in this specific issue um like you said we don't know what the scales is but when i saw the outcome with victor when you're decapitator i'm assuming it looks like she ripped his face his head right off yeah um i didn't i didn't need to know what had happened i'm just excited to be reading this issue um oh you yeah i've now I've, i remember things right away because i think the last issue is probably one of the biggest of the series like for things coming to a head and this is kind of like the aftermath of that which actually turned to be more so i agree with alex i think <coughs> this specific issue like even though i didn't i don't remember all the details i don't remember names well that's how it usually is but now, like there's a lot of details that i'm missing but i feel like this issue lets me know enough and i remember enough of the main overall story that this issue itself is entertaining the fight between the two from a different realm, that's entertaining. Seeing her eat his heart is entertaining. The detective being like, "What's going on?" and her being like, "No, what do you really want to ask me?" And like, and that's a suspenseful scene because you don't know what's going to go on. He has like some flashbacks. He sees that girl and he's like, "I know you." And you see him kind of put the two together. Uh, Tom Coker is awesome in this issue. Oh, mm-hmm. such great art! And I think those colors are great. I know in the forecast we were like, "Come on, you got to be coming out more often," but. If you're putting out this caliber, maybe it's okay. Like I, you know, when the, well, guess when the last issue came out? Alex? August, October, uh, in between September. Oh, I was right the first other time I guessed. So it's been five months. Yeah, but still, like, right? Seems okay. I mean, we we all it's admit, ending we, soon too. We are getting uh, a top notch book. And this one was oversized too, and and yeah, and so we're we're getting more payment back from it being gone for a while. But I tell you what, I it's almost like going through withdrawals when I see this book is coming out and then we're it's taken away from us. It's like, come on, I, re- I want to read this book because this book is so good. I do feel like it's great right now, which would be what, Alex? Nine out of ten? Uh, it's like a seven. <laughs> and it could be amazing if it came out on time. Like, it would be my favorite book. And I would, like, I felt like I read this all back to back. I'd be like, this is the best book I've ever read in my yep. life. Uh, but it's just great because, like, it's it feels like disjointed to me because we're getting issues five months apart. And I guess that's the danger of getting issues. I tell you what, this is one of those books that I hope they make a hardcover edition for it. Yeah, because I, I think I'd it. want to get it. I, I would mean, get it, or you like, just reread your issues all the way. Through. Well, I could do that too. Well, I like a nice hardcover, but especially do, but, if I want to give it to people and be like, "Hey, this is cool." But like, I love the decisions they make for hardcovers and like what the cover is going to be. I just imagine it to be I almost. I like issue five's cover where it's uh, Mammon's head or right, Mammon's face on the suit. On the suit, and say, like, "Oh, that's good." So, uh, nine. Yes, nine. 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 I would imagine all. I don't think he really does, but I would love for this to be collected, and then we get some extra content for that hardcover, like his research. I would love to see his research process on any of his books to see like how much he actually does. I know he's talked about it before, where he has uh, behind me if, uh, to paint a picture for the audience here. I have uh, what do you call these? Uh, tack board, cork board, cork board, and uh, he has like one that goes his whole wall is a cork cork board and he like puts a story on the board that he's talked about before so like i know he does a lot of stuff a lot of planning and stuff like that but i like to see his creative process and so that'd be cool to see especially for this kind of book because i feel like this book he's done tons of research about the stock market about magic and it'd be cool to see that so it's really enjoyable tom coker is a great artist and john hickman is great at writing an issue i don't know why we thought it was going to be bad what I, but i mean we're justified to be concerned on what's going to happen i know the frustration but, is justified yeah five months come on yeah it's but too long. Uh, anyway, especially when he's not doing anything else <laughs> that is the most frustrating part and when i see him on twitter being like literally talking about the most random things i just kind of but i mean i guess in a way we're like it's kind of like a first world problem me like hey why aren't you writing a book so i can enjoy it when he's he's just a guy, he's like he doesn't have to write a book. Yeah. I mean, yes, he did make me the promise of twelve issues, but uh, you know, put it out. It's good. I would say if you're listening to this right now, you don't read this book. Wait until the thing's collected and then get it. I agreed. Don't uh, it's don't, probably gonna be, don't pull on me and go back and buy. It's all probably the gonna be two more years though. 
Yeah, who knows? <clears throat> you know what we'll be returning after this issue, and at least in April. Uh, so we got Lazarus. That was a weird segue. Uh, Lazarus, X plus 66, number six of six. Uh, we're going to talk about the dragon or the beast. It's meh. I, uh, this book was great. It was the best book of this week. Best book I've read probably all month. Best book. Probably best all year. Six. Well, I'd say so. I, what I love about this mini series and, uh, each issue is a different kind of storytelling style, I think. Like, the, there was that silent issue. There was an issue where it well, there was a lot of uh, dialogue. And there's another issue where it's told, like, from a news, like, it was like a news kind of story perspective. And then this one, there's some dialogue. But a majority of this issue is, like, somebody telling you a fairy tale of this yep. dragon, this beast, because he's so mythical. You don't, nobody knows what he's like about this hunter going into the woods. And when he fights those wolves, and he's like, he fought them with steel and, and muscle and blood. And like he, he, in a way he thanked them for like giving him practice before he go fights the beast. And then like just the way it was set up is like this mythical kind of tale. And then when you meet the beast, then it kind of changes to like a normal comic. Cause like it ruins that fantasy and you see the reality of the situation. And he tells you, he tells you a story about the girl, the painting he has. He has a painting of a girl when he gets in there, the hunter and the hunter's like, what's with this girl? And he tells him the story. And how he used to be a weak kid growing up. Everybody else is dressed as brothers were all strong and became uh, uh, guards or soldiers for the family. Soldiers, I believe. And the girl was really smart. She became uh, a scientist, I thought. A scientist, the pride of the family. She was so smart. And he was nothing. But he could be somebody they could experiment on as one of the first Lazari and see if he could become something. And a lot of the Lazari were dying off because they couldn't. Uh, sustain, but he could. Couldn't survive the testing. They couldn't survive it, but he did. And then finally, the family that made him the Lazarite that he was becoming the Lazarite for was like, your first test, you're like, your test ultimate to see if this actually, if you're actually loyal is, you have to go and kill your family. Oh, man. And he does without any hesitation. He goes in there and kills all of them except for... His sister. His sister, because he thought, he was like, I look so different now, they're not going to know who I am anyways. So he killed them all, and then his sister saw him and said his name. And he was like, oh, she does still recognize me. But I think he does a more fucked up thing than the rest of them. The rest of them he just killed. Yeah. He sits them, her in front of their dead bodies, eats them. That Wasn't he eating them? I thought he was making her eat them. One of the two. Yeah, yeah, I think that's he, right. I mean, I mean, obviously, I think he is eating them. He held out like a bone. But he's I, he's putting a finger in her mouth. What finger was? And he's making her chew it. I think he was eating her and like he wanted her to like help him out, but that she obviously like doesn't want it. She was like crying in one panel and he just snaps her neck and he takes her bear as like a memory, a memory of her and takes that portrait and hangs it up in his cave to be like, this is who, uh, this is like the only person I've ever cared about. But still. Who I made eat fingers and I broke her neck. And I this killed story all that's love. Haunting. I mean, it's just from beginning to end, like there was always a sense of dread and like, mm-hmm. You know, adrenaline. Like I was like the whole time when this man yeah. was going to show up, I was like, "Oh God, please!" Like, who knows when this guy's going to show up? And when he does, he's going to freaking rip some heads off. But the crazy thing is that the whole so the build up to begin with was, you know, we're talking about this this guy going on a journey to fight a dragon. Immediately, I'm going, "Oh, cool! There's going to be a dragon in this book." Got a little bit further, and I, I mean, I realized there's not actually a dragon. But I was like, "Oh, there's going to be this monster," thinking that he like the story was the hunter is him to begin with. And then he's going to turn into the dragon. Uh-huh. Then when you build into it, it no, this other guy is going to go kill the dragon or the beast. And the beast is, like, he's a monster, yes. Yeah. But he just seems like a, he seems polite. Civilized. Because he doesn't just sneak up on this guy. He, he, he gives you're going gonna, gonna to look at me and I see that giant cannon you got. He answers this question. He has a question about the painting. He tells him and he says, and the guy, and then the hunter says, you're more inhumane than I thought. You're a monster, uh, more than I could imagine. And he pulls out the cannon, and he says, "Okay, if you can kill me, then kill me. But if you can't, I'm going to kill you." And uh, he can't kill him. So well, he says it cooler than that. He says, "Like he says, then your story will continue. If not, mine will." Yeah. And uh, he shoots the uh, beast, the dragon, and uh, I didn't kill him. Maimed him, though, because he looked like he was bleeding in the last panel. But he, uh, I'm not sure if it's his blood though. <laughs> it, it, well, he did shoot him. Like you're not that close range and you miss. I'm just thinking he lived. Well, I say we. I guess we don't see his face. He does look like he's wiping blood off his face. 
and uh, he tore off the head killed. of the hunter and he put it with his collection next to the portrait of his uh, sister to be like, uh, here's uh, for you. And what foreshadowing did we get? Do you see who else? Who yeah, all the open spots. Need to be there. Uh, what's the last one? I can't read that. Uh, Zalani Nikori. Yep. And then Sonia Bittner and Forever Carlisle. He's ready. Room for that. I, I, I read that and I was like, holy shit. Did you read the letter pages? I read the first page of it. The first page, he says, the point in this miniseries, of course, yes, to give Michael Ark uh, some time to get ahead, but also was to set up some pieces for the ongoing arcs coming forward. So like that, obviously, is us uh, foreshadowing. Yeah. We saw stuff with a couple of characters that were going to start a revolution. That's foreshadowing. We saw um, two Lazari and what happened with them and stuff like that. So we get a lot of stuff that is going to be playing parts in what's coming up. But then also the uh, mention in that the schedule for right now, source book, two, in two months we'll get the actual issue coming back. And then I think there's a, then we're going to skip May, maybe? Yes. And, and then June we'll get an issue in July. No, I think no, I think he's skipping May and June. Yeah, yeah, in July. Or June is, I know it's... You're right. We're skipping. And there's going to be a series. There's going to be five issues coming out back to back five months. Yeah. yeah. Well, the plan is right now, right. but we'll see. Well, you could say even this book got delayed because when he's writing the letters column, it says January. It's like it's February, buddy. <laughs> this this but this book for me, even with uh, Black Money Murders, was I was more than happy to wait because yeah. this, this oh, yeah. book was a ten. Ten. Absolutely. I loved this issue. Yes, I I always wait for Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus doesn't seem like that far of a gap compared to Black Money Murders. And maybe that's because we've gotten so many already that were on time. And so it doesn't seem so frustrating to me because I think we've – it's been on time more than it's been off time. So. But this this miniseries, I'll admit, has helped yes. right. substitute. I, and look, I am starting to, like, miss forever, though. Like, I'm re- I'm ready for her to be back in story, which is coming. But I'm like, okay, like, I love the miniseries, but I'm, I am ready to get forever I back. I think it's kind of crazy, though, that – we were so worried about a miniseries. We were like, why it's going to interrupt the main series? Yes, I understand you're going to... I believe this is my exact words being like, I know you're going to give Lark a break, but I wonder if this miniseries would even be any good and We, if we would just rather just wait for it. Like, what's yeah. this really going to be about? What I was like, I think I was like, what's this going to be about? Like, what what is there else to talk about? And now we get these and I kind of want to be like, I feel like there should be two books going at once. <laughs> you know what yeah. I, mean? I feel like Eric should take over this book and uh, we should have one about the side people and then one about forever. There's a lot of stuff going on in this book and I'm I'm curious to see that source book because it is about the family that the Beast is part of. I need to read those source books. Yeah. I know I've got the, was it Carlisle first, Hawk was Carlisle second. Carlisle Hawk second. I don't remember Russell what the name. Oh, the by one. the way, this ties into source book one. If you listen to the podcast or uh, way back when, whenever that book came out, when that, like two years ago? Yeah. When we first started the show, it was like one of the first episodes. I said I read a uh, majority of it, and there was a part where they talk about a bunch of soldiers go north, and they never come back, and they don't know whatever happened to them. And in this issue, that guy lives in the north, and I'm pretty sh- and there's like bones in the ground. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's where they ended up because they were there was like a they were going up there because there's reports that, that they were seeing like some sort of monster or something like that, or something was up there. And they never came back, and they don't know why. And I think that's why, because they met the dragon. Damn. So uh, it was kind of like foreshadowing. That's where he lived. And the back cover is the cover of a fairy tale book for children. I love this issue. This was a ten for me. This my pick this week. Yeah, same. Of the, of the ones we have here, yes, yeah. yes. It was uh, set up well. The prose I liked that led into the dialogue parts, like you said. Uh, there's a lot of suspense. Oh no, Alex said that. A lot of suspense between the two about like what's leading up to like. And then um, a character who I was already scared of and I thought was already messed up as a monster turns out to be way more inhumane, like the guy said, than I ever thought it could be. And I'm actually more terrified of him. And now we see that last page and it's kind of like, oh, like, can they take out this guy or are they done? Like, are, are they all are, screwed? How many of those three are going to be on that wall? That's what I'm thinking now. I think that's my uh, maybe my biggest fear is that he actually has it's not even objectives he has goals his goal is to get like these three he's people's heads not gonna uh go to sleep or like live any other life rather than live a life to kill those three mm-hmm. yeah or at least there's two forever so which yeah. one's gonna take it <laughs> yeah it holy little... crap what if he gets a hold of the little one yeah she's pretty good though the dog carl just rips his head off sticks it down a pike 
Carl, I couldn't do that. He's too old and frail. I love this whole series. And oh, you're saying forever. Forever, forever. forever? Oh, I just said Don. No, no I, I said like, old. Sorry. Oh. Older forever rips off his head. Oh. Um, They talked about in the last one, I think it was. Or maybe it's in this one. No, it was the last one. Uh, That there's like... um. An RPG uh, role playing game, uh, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but coming out for Lazarus, where you can role play. And uh, I actually think that sounds cool because there's so much of that world. You said there's going to be stuff in there that we haven't even gotten to in the comics. Because yeah, there's so much. If you read those source books, that it does feel like it might be wasted if we don't get anything more. So that'd be cool if to get that and see how it plays out. But yeah, that's good. It's good. Yeah. All righty. Got to find a little splash page here to segue into Sideways, number one. It's New Age of DC Heroes. Uh, it's ris- written by uh, Justin Jordan and Dan DiDio with... Um, Kenneth Rockefeller. Yeah, with art by Kenneth Rockefeller. Can't find the... What's that first page? What is that? It, they always do a like a huge extended page, and there's like a connecting poster, but on the front side, it shows Sideways. Like It's kind of like a previews page for Sideways. Leaping through his worlds. No. Or just showing characters, even. It's just showing characters that are going to show up in the no. book. Um, so we get our first issue. Uh, it starts with him like appearing with I, who I assume is his girlfriend, uh, Ermie? Er- Ernie. Ernie. Ernestine, I think is her yeah, name. Yeah, Ernestine is her name. Um, I get the impression they were just friends. I, yeah, they could I be just friends. I, I assume they're just friends, and she made a suit. Right. Yeah, because um, they, they talk about for a while that they were... Uh, he, she's like, don't pop up in my bathroom ever, like without more permission. So I don't think that'd be a girlfriend. I think that'd be a friend. And Maybe. she's like super obsessed with like anime and monsters and like yeah, she wore that uh, TV shows suit. and she got like rainbow tiger suit or something. She got like Pokemon, not really on her bed and all. I mean, she's Fake got like Pokemon. the like legit nerd room. Can I say one of the best Spider Man books I read in the last couple of years? So. It was cool. I mean, it was. I mean, it is a lot like Spider Man. Yeah. Um, I thought Derek James, the main character, like he's pretty funny. I like him. He's very relatable. Um, his story on how he became sideways, very. I mean, made a lot of sense. Uh, my, that was actually my only complaint in this issue. But the realization, what bugged me is he's talking to his followers, right? People watching his video. He goes, yep. "Yeah, I got this powers." Da, 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 da. I was like, "I don't. You don't need to spell it out for me." But it's not him telling, it's him telling me, but he's telling everybody else. Yeah, right. that's a good way to do exposition. The exposition that sucks is when they tell somebody face to face that they really know and that already knows the story or if they just tell you point blank. Yeah. But this was him telling followers that obviously wouldn't know who he is. So I funny. also like he has super strength, not just the sideways ability to, yeah. to grift through dimensions and like. That's now, where it's definitely kind of like Spider-Man. That it's not just one power. He has multiple powers. And I like how they kind of defined how strong he is. She's like, are you a strong Superman? He goes, well, not that strong. So it's kind of like, oh, he has super strength, but he's not like strong as Superman. So he's just like. So he's like Spider-Man. Maybe he can lift yeah. a car, but he can't like move mountains. Well, but it, it would make sense that if you've got one power, odds are you've got to have something else too. I mean, it, you know, Superman doesn't just have strength, he doesn't just have flying. Vibe can vibe between dimensions. He isn't a super strength. He's a wuss, so. <laughs> I did like that. So one of my, my, like, if you listen to the show for a while and listen to our Blue Beetle review way back when, one of the things you I... the Blue Beetle review? Yeah, yeah, yeah a long man, time ago. Man. Um, one of the things that I look for and that's a huge pet peeve of mine is how older people write kids. Is it too cliche? Is it... It definitely somebody who's not heard a kid talk in the last 20 years writing it. Mm. But I feel like Dan Deal or Justin Jordan, I'm not sure who did the dialogue, uh, really did find a good play. Like, they actually do sound like kids. And I was really yeah. surprised. I was like, oh, seems okay. Like, I didn't have any issue with it. They didn't overdo the... Um, this, a lot of older people seem to overdo the uh, sayings and, like... Slang. Slang uh, to be like, oh, I understand kids. But they don't know the context of it. They don't know how to say it. So, but this was like, oh, okay, this is just, you know, they could, they really didn't overdo it. So that's fine. And they used to technology, obviously, was there when the teacher's like, hey, you got kids, put your phones away, sit back at your desk. Like, that's something that they would say nowadays. Like, they understand where we are now rather than trying to fake it. Um, I really did enjoy it a lot. It, um, the villain at the end, I do recognize for something, but I'm not sure who he is. I know he's an established character. Oh, really? Yeah. He looks like the uh, Watcher. He's not new. I think actually he's a Wildstorm guy, if I remember correctly. Oh, interesting. Um, I like how he kind of gets represented as like a social outcast because of the way he got his powers. 
he like was with his mom. Yes. And so like his mom was going to drive and yeah, like so she, he gets made fun of just, like being a mom's boy because he gets dropped off at school because she doesn't feel comfortable with him driving, like things like that. They also did something fresh with the origin that I, I said on the show before and uh, I guess we'll see where it goes, but he's adopted from a very early age. He doesn't know who his real parents are. He just has his uh, adopted mother and father, but he thinks of them as mom and dad. And we don't have to have a tragedy for him to decide to be a hero. He just decides to be a hero. Like, I, because he's like, hey, that's what I should do. I have powers. Well, he's he doesn't, a little, decide, to be, he doesn't he, decide to be a hero. He doesn't do anything heroic. Well, he just has well, he powers. Got a, he got a super he, suit because he wants to start doing stuff, he said. Well, he's going to just do like stunts and stuff. I just assumed he was going to be like Spider Man, where he want not necessarily even making money. He's just using the suit. Doesn't want. I people. felt like he was a hero, like for publicity right now. But like he understands, like he should use his powers or something. I guess we'll see how he merges into it. But still, I mean, at least there's no tragedy to that. No, no. I mean, this right. Is, that this is a character choosing to be a character. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. I, I'm assuming. Oh yeah. You- so basically, he's just trying. He's saying, "Hey, you tell me where to go, and I'll go there." But not to save people necessarily, but he's just saying he just wants to show people his powers. We'll see him though. I mean, he seems like a good kid. He lo- obviously right. like and obviously so, <laughs> sounds like we're talking about a real kid. Well, he he's did a, that one scene kid. with his mom. He was like, "Hey, be have a good day today. You be good today." He said, "Yep." Like it's not. I like that. That was fun. That little conversation in the car. I like that he's not an angsty kid. He's just like, "Hey, hey." He likes his mom. He likes his dad. He's be just, good today. Yeah. Yeah. So like, he obviously is a good kid. Um, he was worried about his mom when they were stuck in Gotham during that time. So. Uh, it was nice. It felt a little fresh. And I do like about the credits that it says storytellers, Kenneth Rockford and Ben DiDio, rather than say artist Kenneth Rockford. They're like, no, he's part of the story. And that's what these books are supposed to be, this new age of heroes. They're putting the artists first. And that's nice that he gets first building with the end of the deal. So. I like how these dimensional riffs are going to have like, it's kind of like the speed force basically the, with this. Yeah. I mean, the guy You're you really, know is an established character. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Um, how he's going to be, he's going to be like a, not a threat, but he's going to be an omnipotent force that Derek has to interact with. Probably not like willingly. So I, was, I don't know if it's uh, I, I don't think he's a bad guy. Do you? He's just trying to control. No. He's using his rift force way too often. That he's going to cause issues. I, I feel like he's just like a strict protector yeah. of whatever he's doing. You have sweet power. Stop doing all that crap. Right. And I literally think that this should have been the first new age of DC heroes. It's dead damage. Way better than damage. I don't know about silencer, but this is exactly what I'm looking for in a first issue. Yeah. Damage. All the stuff about the character. I missed that. So that's why I'm guessing we're going to get an issue two. But but I think the thing is that they expected people don't want to know the people want the, the Hulk character, the damage character to be in that form and to just destroy stuff. We'll give you backstory later. When in all honesty, I just need a little bit more of a, Hey, this is what's going on. Yeah. We just kind of got dropped out of a plane and we were pissed off. Oh wait, that was in the book. Never mind. Right. (laughs) Um, I give it, I give it a nine out of 10. I was going to give it an eight. Uh, it's a good start. I'm, I'm on I'm an eight. That Rock of Ford art. We didn't even talk about Rock of Ford. No, that art. art was fabulous. Holy cow. You didn't skip a beat. No. Nope. I, I missed that art. You know, I, was, I keep looking at the cover. The details on Derek's hands are amazing. Yeah. On those fingers. You can see his nails through the gloves, His the wrinkles in his fingers. That's some dedication. That's a good suit. That's also, cool. what I like about this character is like when those kids were like making fun of him and stuff like... He's not using his powers to like, you know, go after them. He's just like, hey, they uh, talk about me that way, but it's fine. Like he's they have their opinions. They have their opinions. He's like sympathetic, sympathetic to them. Be like, hey, they might, you know, they uh, are mean to me, but he's like, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? It's not like it's like they don't know me. I'm yeah, they don't know who I am. So it's like he seems well adjusted. Yeah. And I find that interesting because usually the kids usually. I feel like a lot of teen books, the kids were in the same. They're like angsty or obnoxious to their parents. They uh, get bullied at school. And then when they get powers, they use it right away to bully the kids back. And like, that's what they want to do with it. And uh, I don't think that's a good example. And then also like they have to be like tricked into being a hero rather than be like doing me and hero for a good reason. So I didn't like the way this was started. I'm not going to keep getting it, especially Grant Morrison jumping on. I want to see what yeah. he does with that. So good stuff this week. Cybers number one, we have uh, Marvel 2 and 1 number three. Black Monday Murders, number eight. We have uh, Dark Knights, The Rising, The uh, Hunt, number one. We have uh, Captain America, 698. And also, 
Lazarus X plus 66, number six. Uh, good books this week. Supercon 2018, Return of the Con, September 28th, 29th, and 30th. Tickets on sale at supercon.com. Alex, we're going to be there doing a show, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to be there on the 28th doing a uh, live show for everyone. What's it going to be called? Wednesday Comics After Dark. Dark. And not only us are going to be there, a lot of people are going to be there. Phil Hester, right, Gary? Yes, Phil Hester, the uh, current artist of Batman Beyond. Uh, he's done other projects like Shipwreck. Um, he's done some Swamp Thing that you may or may not have seen in uh, some Holland Files that came out recently. Not only Phil, Science Steve, Shay Fontana, Tony Fleece, uh, Travis Nye, Midwest All Pro doing a show the 28th. They'll be doing a show that night. That's the main attraction that night. Jill Thompson, Ryan Cody, John Allen, and more. Tom Wynn. Uh, gonna be at supercon.com make sure there's a lot going on that weekend I would say if I am gonna tell you any kind of advice by that weekend pass you won't regret it you got map concert that night also you got Wednesday comics after dark and then you got a whole weekend of uh, stuff to do people to see supercon.com for more information all right let's talk about Black Panther King. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Why are you taking with you to Korea? Oh, Korea. And not here as well. You sure it's a good idea to take your ex on a mission? Yes. We'll be fine. Don't freeze. I never freeze. Tell me who's gonna save me from myself When this life is all I know You get to decide You need a hero, look in the mirror, there go your hero What kind of king you are going to be Directed by Ryan Coogler, written by Robert Coog- Excuse me, Ryan Coogler, <laughs> Joe Robert Cole From characters from Stanley and Jack Kirby Starring who? You had the cast list a second ago, Garrett um, I know Chadwick Boseman's in it. Michael B. Jordan, Lupita, uh, how do you say her last name? Is it Lupita Nyong'o? Yes. And then uh, Danielle Guerrero from Walking Dead. Mark, Martin Michonne. Freeman. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's got a, is that a spoiler? No, he's in the trailer. No, yeah, you see him. He's not in that movie that much. And then we have... Um, no, I think he's in there a decent amount. He's way, he's more than, way more than... His I role isn't that big. You're right. He's in a movie f- for a great length, but his role's not that big. Right. Uh, Danielle Kalulon and... Some other people. There's some. Oh, Andy Circus. Forrest Whitaker. Circus. Forrest Whitaker. And uh, mm-hmm. somebody else. We'll talk about it towards the end of the review. No spoilers up front. Remember that. We're gonna talk about the review here for a second. We'll give a quick little uh, roundtable today about what we think of this movie. Uh, Garrett, what do you think overall? No spoilers. Remember, what do you think? You liked it? You didn't like it? Is it uh, one of the your top Marvel movies, or is it just like one of them? Um, I, I really liked it. Is it one of my top Marvel movies? I would say no. Um. You know, spoiler free, like the opening was good, but right after the initial opening, it like went to the bottom of a pit and started climbing itself out. So I'm not saying it was like awful, but like it took a lot. There's a lot of exposition. Um, And so it kind of took me out of it right away, like badass opening. Then there was a lot of buildup. And then about halfway through the movie to the end, it was great. Um, So... I, I generally enjoyed it, but it's it's not in the top five for me. But I, I'm excited to see what else they can do with this universe. I really I enjoyed the cast a lot. I think the cast was awesome for this movie. To be fair to that movie, though, that beginning part, they explained it later what it is. Right, and that made it better. But during at the at the moment, okay. I was like, yeah, okay. Later they explained kinda, Michael, B, Michael B. Jordan's character said that one day my dad told me all about Wakanda. That's what that opening is. It's him asking his dad. Oh, no, 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 no. That part I said I liked. Oh, okay. Right after that. The soft opening. Okay, Alex, what do you think? Of I uh, I enjoyed it. It's not a, a top. It's not a top five. It's probably a top fifteen. Because they actually really kind of like the first half of it. Is really, there fifteen of them? I think so. Okay, I'll check. If there's not, <laughs> no, it's on the top fifteen. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, you're, I think you're, like, you say I top fifteen. Like what, what if there's fifteen? You're just saying it's in the movies. <laughs> it's in one of them. I thought it was almost like twenty movies long now. Is there? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. Think I don't so. think so. I think there is like fifteen. Oh, look no. it up here. You look it up. I'm pretty sure there's a little bit more than 15. Anyway, uh, it's good. I really did enjoy it, but my problem is I, I go into a movie expecting it. I'm, like it's going up against Winter Soldier, which is always going to probably be my favorite. And I wanted this movie to be better than Winter Soldier for me. So it had good parts. It had parts that I was like, oh, I'm kind of bored, 
but that's fine. And today we have with us our uh, guest, Kyle. Kyle, what do you think of the movie? When did you see it? Opening night or you saw it today? I saw it yesterday. Yesterday. Last night. So opening day. I guess opening so. day, technically. Thursday, yeah. they consider preview night. Uh, you saw it opening day. Was it a packed theater? Sold out? It was pretty crowded, but it wasn't sold out by any means. wasn't sold out? Ours was sold out, wasn't it sold out? Yeah, pretty much. As I, you know, weirdly enough, I don't actually know if it was sold out. Like, I know it, I, it got all bought out, but whether or not people actually bought the tickets, I don't know. Uh, by the way, Black Panther is the 18th movie. Mm. Boom. So you're saying there's Top three. 15. It could be three. That's just worse. <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> Iron, three. <laughs> Iron Man 3. So, Kai, what do you think of the movie? I really enjoyed it, and I am a Black Panther fan just in general. Um, there were obviously some issues. No, it's, you know, they can't do everything in the comics that, into the movies. It's yeah. impossible. And getting in later with the spoilers, I'll be able to tell more of what my, some of my grievances were. But just in general, I was, I really liked the way they did this movie. I, um, agree with Kyle. I don't know what movie you two saw, but I really enjoyed that movie. I think it actually is. And, uh, I'll have to give it some time to figure it out, but I do think it is maybe top three Marvel for me. That exposition, you got to think though. Like, I want to know what your top three are. Yeah, I let me guess. Yeah, we'll do a top five Marvel movies one time in the show. Well, I can't remember that. <laughs> <Not Yeah. laughs> but uh, I can't do it off the cuff. I don't even know there was how many there was. Eighteen. <laughs> Give me that list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing was, you're talking about. There's a lot of exposition. All those movies, the first one, are an origin story. There's a lot of exposition. But I thought this movie, at least, all those movies have origin stories that like have the same beats and like start and like you get to know the character. Obviously, because they don't have powers at the beginning, but this one's like you're getting right into it, so you have to kind of, and that's what Martin Freeman's brought in for to be the guy that doesn't know anything about it to be told, hey, this is this, this, and this, and then we have that scene with Michael B. Jordan and his dad at the beginning. I guess it's not Michael B. Jordan; it's when he's a kid when they do have like an animation thing where he's telling them the history of Wakanda. So actually, they think like it's a hard thing to do to be like this is we, we're trying to make it that this has been established for years, so it's hard to be like, hey, you guys, here's we're trying to catch you up on what's been happening rather than telling you what's happened. I thought actually they did a good job about it. Um, I thought without any spoilers, it's the best villain out of any Marvel movie that I can agree with. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I think that the action in this movie is uh, very visceral and real compared to other movies. Like they actually, the every fight felt like it meant something rather than just being a fight like uh, between two CGI characters. There's certain scenes. We'll talk about it later, but there's certain <laughs> scenes when they have to basically depower and like fight each other. And those scenes were really great because it isn't at that point, it could be any like movie. It's not a superhero movie anymore. And it is a lot about like this culture and rather than being about a superhero. So I thought those were really great and I actually did really enjoy it. Um, if I had to say that anything was uh, bad about this movie, I guess I can't really, I did have something coming in, but I can't really not just not really that big of a annoyance for me for me to remember it. But Andy Circus is great. Andy Serkis he plays, plays a completely different guy he plays, than he was yeah. in Age of Ultron. He plays a guy that, a villain that is like kind of cartoony, like outrageous. And then you have someone like Michael B. Jordan who plays it more subtle. And there's like, he basically plays, oh, we'll get into his spoilers. I don't want to spoil that part for you. But I would say, would you say uh, overall, if somebody wants to go see his movie, if they're interested at all, they would go see it? I think as well as, okay, to be fair, I don't think this is a movie that you need to go see before uh, Infinity War. Not no. even other than, other than setting up where you're at. But otherwise, I, I really enjoyed this movie. If you like Black Panther, if you like the comic book universe that we're in for the movies, by all means, go see this. It's worth your time. It looks great. Oh, what about somebody like just they've never seen any of the movies? Is this good? like a good standalone movie for them to see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because this is one of, as long as you have at least some inkling of who these characters may be, you're fine. And then you tell you who the Black Panther is. I mean, not just who the actor is or who the character is what his role is in Wakanda. And that's, I think that was a really nice part about the film too, is it was made for people that had never seen anything else. I feel like, um, you know, this is Ryan Coogler's only his third film he's ever made. Um, so going in and like, you know, even the civil war bits, they put that in the movie. So <laughs> if you had not seen civil war, you're not like, Oh, why is uh black Panther's dad dead? That's not spoilers. Mm -hmm. um, so that part I thought was really great that if there were new people coming in right before Infinity War you could come in and you know all you need to know about Black Panther by the end of that they refer to those scenes but I don't think they ever like refer to other heroes to try to confuse right. anybody who's new like I don't think do they ever talk about any other heroes I don't think so no even though Black Panther's obviously been with him and fought with him he doesn't ever bring them up 
he does to bring up the NBC scene, but like even in that full flashbacks, uh, I don't think you ever see any other no, person it, rather than just his dad in him. Yeah. Which I think was strong because like just because you're in a shared universe doesn't mean you got to crutch on other movies. Like it's nice because, you know, it's a shared universe, mm-hmm. but you can tell that that takes place in the Marvel universe, but you don't need the support of all the other movies to make yours a great movie. But it makes sense that he would never comment or talk about other um, movie characters. For the fact that where they're at, they only talk about Wakanda. Wakanda is all that's important. Well, there's, so they don't reference outside of this world. There is one thing that I would say that I think they should have referenced, but we'll talk about it in spoilers here in a second. Um, Kyle, what do you think? If somebody who's interested in this movie should just go see it, is it good enough? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it's a really good standalone mov- movie, as we've been saying. Um, yeah, and even the part where they were doing like the flashback to the embassy or whatever, all the seats and everything else were empty. It was just the father. Just T'Chaka and mm-hmm. T'Challa, so right. e- e- that's that could even be seen as you know just his memory, right? Because it was that about. important right. where he lost his father. Yeah, it doesn't even refer to it as like, hey, it was part of that civil war thing. It's just like, hey, you're, you're you and your father went to the UN and he died. That's mm-hmm. right. basically all that happens, and it does catch you up pretty quick. And uh, yeah, I think actually, I, I really did enjoy it. I actually, want to see it again. Um, I think the score is great. The soundtrack even is great. I've been listening to the soundtrack before then when it came out. It's great. And I think Ryan Coogler does a great job with a lot of the action. I think CGI a little bit. That Oh, that was the thing. CGI a little bit. He's a little bit like new. I don't think there's any CGI in Creed. Yeah, that's what I thought too. It was like that was a little... Because you would didn't think, really mesh well. You would think that in other Marvel movies that they have, like, he does the whole movie and then he hands it off and, like, Marvel just does this yep. CGI. Yeah. There's a couple instances where I'm like, mm, that looks a little off. Right. Like, yeah. when the the mask comes on and off, like, it looks like that plan is digitally put on the, on the costume. And I was like, hmm, it's, it seems like at this point, 18 movies in, that they would have that down. But right. Especially with Iron Man being the first one, like, it's the same thing. Yep. Like, you should be able to put his face over the suit. Uh, that was the only thing I had, but I think that's more from, I'm not sure what the budget was on this movie, but I think maybe Ryan Cooler is not as familiar how to shoot for CG because those other movies don't have any CG, right. I don't think. No. Nope. So that was my only thing, but I think otherwise, directing wise, writing wise, uh, it's a very strong movie and I did really <laughs> did enjoy it. Uh, this, now we're going to get into uh, spoilers here. So if you haven't seen the movie, go ahead and go take a look. You know, go for yourself. We all, I think, enjoyed it enough to see it. And uh, if you haven't seen any of those movies, I think you can go see it too, so... Uh, but if you have seen it, we'll talk about some spoilers. The first thing I wanted to mention um, at the I rewatched Civil War today. Nice. The last part, because I just wanted to see because when at the end, the after credit scenes, when Bucky shows up <laughs> for some reason, I turn to Corey, uh, I guess I was one slash guess I was one. And I I go, uh, when did, when did uh, Bucky get to Wakanda? <laughs> oh, War. you're talking about the post credits <laughs> yeah. of the yeah. Black Panther. Yeah. And then I watched Civil War and I was like. Well, he's not in big Wakanda yet, so I texted somebody, and they were like, "Oh, yes, the after credit scene." So I watched that, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot." But if you watch that after credit scene in Civil War, Wakanda looks way different than yeah. it does in this movie. Oh, a hundred percent. So it's kind of like <laughs> they did really, and that might be Coogler and everybody else involved in the film decided to change it because in that movie it looks very sterile, looks very uh, like jungle. almost like a yeah jungle hospital, and then they changed it to be more like, "Oh no, this is like an African village." Uh, in the future, kind of like they have, they have uh, cyberpunk for right. Blade Runner. This was like kind of like an Afro punk like future. But to be fair, I mean that prison. If it, I mean that was a prison where they were being held. Not in, well, I think they that were, wasn't Wakanda. That, that was, was the, on, that was on the that okay, was that was an island. <laughs> I was gonna say then you wouldn't have no, to be able it to ends see with in Wakanda. Cap, but. it ends with Bucky getting frozen again, and Cap and uh, T'Challa looking out the window, and you see the Black Panther. Oh, that's right. And he's like, oh, they're in Wakanda. Okay. Hmm. So, but I don't know why if he's frozen. And then we get the after credit scene where he comes out of a hut and uh, Suri, his Chakala's Ch- Ch- sister, was, what did she say at the end? Do you remember? Anybody? You always picking on that white boy again? And then and she then said, you've got a lot to learn still. Yeah, we yep. got a lot to learn still. So, And then they go off, obviously, to train probably. And we, so we know, all, we know Cap's there, Winter Soldier, Falcon probably, uh, Ant-Man, yep. and um, uh, Scarlet Witch. They were all part of that group that was captured. Yep. So they're all probably there, and we've seen in the trailers for Avengers Infinity War that uh, Thanos attacks Wakanda. So hopefully, I mean, that's probably who's going to be there. But I, we have seen other heroes at that island. Scarlet, Wakanda. or uh, not Scarlet. Hulk Black is Widow's in, there. And Hulk's in Hulk, that scene, right? So, Iron Man. Yep. So maybe Hulk's going to get sent down from, from space. What was Crash the... Crash land Wakanda? And there was another after credits scene. Oh, they're at the UN, and... T'Challa's like, hey, we're going to work together with you guys now. No more secrets, no more lies. 
And they go, oh, what does Wakanda have to offer? And he smiles because he knows they have vibranium. And so we'll get more. I assume what they had to offer was Black Panther. No, they knew about Black Panther. No, he's already sure he helped him out. It's that's vibranium. The whole, that's the whole point of what his girlfriend said. I can't think of her name. Is saying the whole movie is like. Or Nigiri. Right. Nigiri. Okay. She's like, hey, we have the ability to help other civilizations, other nations, mm-hmm. whatnot. Like, it's selfish of us to have all this power and not be able to share it to better the world. And so that's where it goes for Black Panther. He's like, no, I think I think you're right. We're going to do that because we should not just hold this all to ourselves. That's like old ways. That was the moment in the film where I thought they should have brought up other heroes because she's like, we have the ability to help everybody. Why aren't we helping anybody? anybody? Like, they need our help. And I was like, well, but they got like other heroes too. Yeah. But I think they were more referring to like uh, Africans and African-Americans and everybody around the world like as of African descent that are out there struggling like Michael B. Jordan's character was. Like he lost his fa- family and he grew up in the streets and was like very poor. Like those type of people. Like he came from a place of anger, which actually is the best point in this movie, I think, is that Michael B. Jordan's character and uh, um, T'Challa, what's my, oh, Killmonger, but what's his first name? Eric. 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 Uh, They both are the same person at the beginning, like when they're kids. And they both show them as kids in the movie. Mm -hmm. It's just that their circumstances lead them to a point when like his his father dies and he wants vengeance. T'Challa's father dies and he wants vengeance. The only thing is when they get the po- to the point when T'Challa gets there, or actually he, he sees in Civil War and he learns that it wasn't Winter Soldier, it was uh, uh, Zemo. Zemo. He decides to, he goes, I don't want this vengeance in me anymore. It's taken over me. I'm going to make sure like you bring, you get brought to justice, but I'm not going to kill you. Whereas Killmonger, he grew up with hate. He grew up with wanting to kill people because he didn't have you know, a stable life. He was poor. He was living in the streets. And he's like, no, I got to kill you because you brought me in this situation. Where the child grew up a prince, a king. And so it was different for that. So I did like you saw basically the same story because in any other in any other uh, story, we could have had Killmonger. That could have been the hero. Like, you know, his dad dies early. He rises up. He becomes like the best of the best. He fight, He's basically like Batman he, like, he's without the, the money. Yeah. Well, yeah. He pushes himself to the peak of human perfection. And we see when they both power down, he's stronger than T'Challa. He can beat him. It's just that his heart's not in the right place, so he doesn't have... So he can't be the hero. He turns to being the bad guy. And uh, I thought that was great because it shows you that, you know, these two people, it, it is really a matter of circumstance. And T'Challa sees that being like, we could have saved him. We were the ones who wronged him here. Like, he could have been somebody good. And uh, now he's not because of what we did. So I thought that was really great in the movie. What you, he, he's probably one of the only bad guys who has a legitimate reason. That's why I thought he was one of the best villains. The hero. I mean, if you go back to Civil War, uh, Zemo kind of does, but it's it's like they never show you any of that. He just talks about it. So it's like that one seems like they wrote that in to be like, oh, here we need a reason for him to hate the Avengers. Whereas the other one, it's built up over the whole course of the movie mm-hmm. to a point when we get to that final scene when he does get stabbed and he goes. Uh, my dad, he used to tell me uh, about Wakanda. He goes, what about that? A, a kid from Oakland believing in fairy tales. And he tells him, how st- like, how stupid am I that I believe in this? And it's just, that's more like when you get to that point, I, you feel sorry for that villain. Whereas in the Civil War, when Zemo's talking about like his family, all that kind of stuff, it, like it's like a, more like a force being like, hey, you should be sad for this guy. Whereas <laughs> the other one, I actually did feel sad for Eric. But when we're all expecting him to be like Baron Zemo, and he's just like... Some guys He's still around though. He can still turn. That's true. Um, when like that scene though, you know, I like how I mean, since we're in full spoilerville, like people are saying like, "Oh, Marvel's broken the curse." I'm like, no. Whenever there's potential to have a great villain, they kill him off. And I was going to say that's yeah. only that sad part still of the happened. It's like, come on. I mean, but both it, villains were great, and they both got killed. It yeah. made it more powerful of a scene. But. And I get, I, you know, I get that's probably what Ryan Coogler's mentality is like. I'm making the standalone movie that takes place in a shared universe. Like, I have no expectations to do a sequel. I think his death really meant the most out of any death. Right, even. exactly. Usually they so die like, from something stupid and you're like, oh, okay, right. yes, they're dead. But he gets stabbed by T'Challa and he gets brought to sh- see the sunset because that's what his dad told him. It's the most beautiful sunset in the world. That He's was a also, really powerful scene. T'Challa also more or less offers to heal him. Yes, and he says... He's, no. Yeah, I don't want to be in chains like my... my uh, Just bury me at sea. My descendants, like, yeah. Like the slaves who jump ship because they'd rather die than be prisoners. Which also is like another great moment. You're like, mm-hmm. man, like he really does stand by his principles. Like he never waved, like wavered from the day he saw his da- dad die. And plus they both held their father in their arms when they were dying. So there's another point being like these guys are the same person. It's just that one was wronged and one was brought up right. 
And he, you see at that point, he's from that moment, he's just like kind of like Batman. He's like, I'm not going to rest until, except for him, he's like, I'm not going to rest until whoever did this dies. Whereas Batman, he gets to the point when his, uh, he does he ever meet Dochelle in the, I know he does in the movie, but he did. no, because I think one there's one story where he's dead already. So, so Bruce never gets to meet in him. the comics. You mean or in the movie? No, there's some. I don't remember what thing it's from, but, but there's think, one that Joe Chill is already dead, so he never actually right. gets to take vengeance. What's on What's different there is that Bruce is kind of like he says, "No, I'll kind of make sure this never happens to anybody else." Whereas mm-hmm. uh, Eric's just like, "No, I'm gonna make sure whoever did this pays," and that's his life goal. But the one thing is like, kill, yeah, I mean, Killmonger. His even you don't want to put him in jail. He will get out, and he's still going to kill you and kill everyone else who stands in the way. So it's almost a a growth from Killmonger going. I might as well kill myself and let you know, let me die in the ocean, do my own thing. I don't want to be a part of this because I will still gun after you. So it's almost him being like, screw this shit. I love that intro scene of him, like in the museum, where he's like asking questions about the yes. certain artifacts. Yep. I was like, holy shit, this is great acting. Like, I love that. He kill. killed it. That's, I love that, that kill. That's probably one of the best intros of a villain I've ever seen too. I mean. Saying, it reminded me very much of like Heath Ledger's The Joker, you know, when they're doing kind of like a hit basically to, uh, you know, establish the character. And I thought that was a great that was a great scene like that in general. Was yeah, it just also a great sets opening. up early that he hates what he calls a uh, colonist because he's like, where do you get this uh, axe from? And she tells him, where was, I think I forgot what country she says it's from. He goes, no, nope, that's from Wakanda. And he goes, I'm going to he goes, I want that. And she goes, oh, it's not for sale. And he goes, no, but did your people. Uh, pay for it when they took it and from that point on you know his cause you know why he's angry and you know like mm-hmm. he's not like he's not gonna be a person that's gonna be like like alex says, oh yeah we'll, we'll go good no he hates everything and so he's got yeah. bloodlust for everybody who stands in his way and, and even with the mask that he takes it's kind of this almost demon yeah. type thing it's like this is speaking to me Mine. and he takes it and um and wears it for a few scenes he does until he decides to uh betray uh claw which I think in the mo- they actually that's another thing I love about this movie. We know from Creed that Ryan Coogler can do action scenes. Absolutely, that first boxing scene is great. It's a long take, a couple long take scenes in here. The one I didn't expect for some reason that basketball scene when it was at the beginning, uh, which actually is Eric, but you don't know till later on. Uh, there's a long take of them playing basketball, and then later on in the casino scene, which is an amazing scene I think mm-hmm. when they're fighting. That is a long take. Also, there's no cuts until I think they leave it. And I just think the, it's great the way the camera just like floats around and sees everybody fighting. And then, um, God, what's your name for the plays? Uh, Michonne and Walking Dead? The Can general? Danielle? Or? I just know it's the general from. Yeah, I have it pulled up here. But I think she was amazing in the movie. And I think that's the reason why, because she wasn't supposed to be in Avengers Infinity War. Right. And then she went back to do reshoots. Like they were like, oh, no, you should come in and be in this movie now. And I think they saw the last scene and were like, she has to be in that movie. Um, I think I read, maybe this is all false. I think I read something where there was a similar stunt coordinator from Walking Dead on this show, on the Black Panther movie, because she said she, a lot of her fighting scenes is very similar to when she's using her samurai sword and uh, oh, you think so? Walking Dead. But um, I thought, yeah, she was great in this whole movie. Um, she had some comedy beats, but she was also just a badass the entire movie. And that scene, the car chase scene. One of the best car chases I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Like, that was just so much fun to watch. I did like the uh, kind of use of, like, VR, like, that they're actually... Yeah. That technology that they have for Wakanda, it, it felt fresh. I've never mm-hmm. actually seen that in a movie before. That was very impressive. A lot of the technology... Like, <laughs> you know what I thought? So, he gets mm-hmm. a suit later on in the movie that if you hit it, it, it absorbs the force, and then eventually you can use it to push back. Later on, when Eric and T'Challa both have a suit, and they're fighting... And they both get built up and then they go after each other and they hit each other and they bounce off because there's so much energy. Kind of look like Dragon Ball Z for a second. Like they're like <laughs> fighting. And right. then they charge each yeah. other. There's so much force. They bounce Bam. back. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, it's kind of cool. Like, <laughs> And I think that brought, because a lot of times when you have two CGI characters fighting like that, eventually it gets to the point where like there's a little nothing on screen. I'm watching like a cartoon yep. right now. But it brought enough to it that I was like, uh, and they kept like taking off, off their mask when they're fighting on the railing because the powers kept going on and off. Yeah. There's enough of it for me to be like, all oh, those real people. Yeah. And I think it actually brought a lot to the fight. I'm trying to find the fight choreographer because you were talking about that, but I don't see it here. I, th- I feel like I read an article online sometime. But, um, so I guess I'll just throw out my gripes then that I had. Um, the one gripe I had, I said, was right after the animation, which was, off, which was awesome about Wakanda, like learning about that history and everything. Um, the way 
it, not even necessarily the scene where you see his father come to his uncle for the first time. Oh, it's more so. I can forget. Uh, what animation are you talking about? That's what they're talking about. All right the tribes. The yeah, that's right. Okay, that was the awesome. Sand, that was one sand. of the best animations I've ever seen. Um, but the scene where you know Black Panther is going to get his girlfriend. Um, <laughs> it might have been because also in that movie uh, there was a giant glare in the bottom left corner that was driving me nuts so i pro- i had to like, i fiz- that part whatever it's I'm hard gonna, to see i'm not gonna waste scene. time on that but i had to freaking close the not door the actual movie in the theater, in the theater right, right in the theater yeah um so i was already out of the scene but when i what i was watching i was like is this really necessary to the plot and it really didn't seem like it so i'm really not for i think it did because it was trying to do what you said break up the exposition up front and be like here's some fighting and then also yeah but he's was it really necessary it shows how much he cares for her a it sets up them being a lover and trust being like that he yeah. freezes and when he sees her but then also he's like i want you to come back and you need to be there when my father got killed like, well, i want you to come and back. that it also crowning. cements the fact that hey we've got spies all over the world yeah. blah blah yeah. blah i don't know it just felt very set up for me i think that was one of the first fight scenes though for me that you actually see how stealthy black panther is i mean yeah. he's in a pitch black jungle and he was so hard to see and maybe a little bit was the glare i think it was just his suits that black he's in that dark of a jungle he's right. taking everybody out you get to see how bulletproof he is he's just he's being a badass right just i, I also like him being crouched in the tree yeah look up and oh <laughs> shit we dead <laughs> so i give i give like i'll give forgiveness to that scene just because i was distracted by something that was i think outside when you, the I think when you watch it again i was gonna yeah. say like it's it's right great. it is good i think for like a, scene. a third of that scene you were like looking at the light being like should I go close that yeah. door? And I was. And you left for like I, I, that's a what full I said. minute. Yeah, yeah so. right. <laughs> shame on a movie theater not noticing a freaking glare on the bottom well, left. They're supposed to close Especially when door. I'm playing, when I'm paying extra money for an XD uh, showing or whatever. They're supposed to close the door. I'm not sure why they didn't. <laughs> um, uh, my, so this thing, not going to piss anybody off, but like I didn't feel like Black Panther himself. Like I didn't feel like he had very much character of my. Like, I didn't associate with oh, him. Really, the, so the whole supporting cast I loved. I thought he was the flattest in the movie. My question is, I didn't notice a lot of him being brainy in the movie. He's supposed yeah, to be one of the smartest that's what characters. I thought too. That Shuri was doing all the smart stuff, all the right. thinking, all the other characters he was were just doing reacting. all this thinking here. He's just the one that's getting told to do all this stuff, and I get he, that's his. He's the king. What do you he's mean? The, right. Who makes the decisions? Even like the way he kills Eric at the end is a smart thing. He's no, like, no, no, no. He no. knows to use. Be like, oh, I gotta throw that up there, and it's gonna come down exactly at this moment. That was that was literally the only one time I saw him do something smart move. Like I'm thinking ahead to do this move, and I, I, I don't know. Just I, I agree. One of those things that I pictured him more, like in the comics, like they make him off as, and that, I mean maybe it's because that's after years of experience, but he seems more cunning. More intellectual on this one, it seemed like he was reacting to things. He's not like I don't, you know, uh, Kyle. He's not like, like super smart in the comics. He's very tactile. I was, like, I, was I, he's, he's, I was told he's, he's one of the he's smartest. part of the Illuminati. He's one of yeah. the top ten in the world. So, but I think like he's brought in. Isn't he more brought in for being like he's like so good at like fighting and being a strategist? So he's like that type of guy. I, no, I was he is also an extreme scientist. He's extremely right. good That's at true. science. Well, they might but have. I see that you don't even. You can't, I'm not saying that's comics versus the movie. Yes, you can't that's even exactly. tell that. They movie. might have broke right. up that part of his character and gave it to Siri instead. Right. Which, which because Siri or Shuri is also supposed to be roughly as combat uh, yeah. good in combat as right. he is. She's exactly. supposed to be able to push him to his limits. Yeah. So that part just kind of like it, it also kind of just like I don't know. I couldn't like associate with him as a as a hero, but the supporting cast like his sister I thought was amazing. Like yeah. that actress slash her characterization one of the best I've ever seen in a movie. I think she deserves her own mer- movie and I would love to see Shuri as a Black Panther at some point in time. I thought they were going to let her be. I mean, I, I know that she he, she couldn't be the Black Panther yet. Right. I thought when she but, was fighting Eric and the guns failed, she was going to be like, oh, I got my own suit. Like, <laughs> hey, I've been hiding this thing that'd be that sweet. I made for myself. I thought it would have been sweet, little fur coat but thing. it wouldn't have given her much of an, adv- you know, wouldn't give her any real advantage. It'd give her no, she doesn't whole, have the thing. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't have the, her, her, the heart heart-shaped herb. herb. Um, one of the parts that I think they missed a, like a good call out would have been when they were going to the uh, Jabari tribe after Killmonger's taken over, and the the Queen Mother says, "Nagari, you should take the, tr- the herb." Why didn't they say Shuri? I know that's you. what I yeah. thought too. When you are also a bloodline, royal blood. I you, thought she was going to step up because she has the whole movie like been outspoken that she mm-hmm. would have been like, "Hey, why don't I take it?" Like. I know, like, I know I'm with my brother, like, 24-7. I've developed the suit. Like, I know all this already. My guess would be then she's she's still distraught about uh, spoilers. Uh, 
We're in spoilers. We're in spoilers. I, I know, I know, but I, but but this is even a bigger spoiler. <laughs> T'Challa dies, quote unquote, is dead. They think he's dead. Yeah, and I'm guessing she's still. I mean, Queen Mother and her are walking side by side. She's still upset about what had happened. It probably never even occurred to her. Going, I could be. I can't. You just want T'Challa to get the shit kicked out of him by Killmonger. She's like, I don't want that happen. Yeah. And Mom isn't going to want another. kid I was going to say die. that's probably why she's like, I don't want my other kid to be in danger. <clears throat> Fuck this spy. She can die. Alex, what do you think about the rhinos? When I saw the rhinos, I knew right away Alex was either happy or sad. Uh, I was happy. Uh, I don't. It bothers me because legitimately, it, it doesn't make sense because rhinos would not be that kind. <laughs> oh it would not God. be that gentle. No They're way could you. With no way could science. you ride it. But then it also is like these rhinos aren't even killing anybody, which is fine. Not a lot I think of they were killing people. Uh, I don't know. They they were hitting they a were, lot of people were, really hard. They were running hard. But I also you don't you think see, you would die. You keep no, you would die. I'm saying normal people die. Uh, these guys, I watched these girls get back up. I'm fine. There were good parts with them, but I saw people getting up. I thought they were slain on the floor. Oh, everyone! Yeah, most of what I saw, they didn't get back up. No, I oh, I just so. kept watching people get back up. Because there was that scene but when then, then again, it's so fast paced that yeah. it's kind of hard to. So there was it, one scene when one guy looks around and he sees a bunch of people on the floor, and I saw a bunch of, of them on the floor. But I like the, the I did like the the I'm gonna call it the boss rhino that whomever is riding. Mm-hmm. I like that when the girlfriend comes out and stands in front of it. Whoa, we ain't fight no more. Licks her face is all kind, and she is the boss. I was gonna ask that, you, do you think she would get whiplash from that tongue lick? <laughs> I I am surprised she didn't get like lifted off the ground as it licked her. <laughs> But I, I like it was good. There were there were funny beats when um sure he's driving the car in South Korea and she runs over that guy. She goes, What is that? Don't worry, just keep driving. Runs over that dude. Oh, it's good. I think the humor is great. That, like that, you said, that was yeah. some pretty dark humor actually yeah. <laughs> for that. But even to Tom's like, oh, screw it, who who cares? I think I'm another, not saying I didn't I, I like the was, movie. It's just those were my gripes at, initially. Yeah. And I do really enjoy the film. Um Action was great. Comedy was on point. The CGI, yes, had some bad yeah, moments, but it had e- some amazing moments yeah. too. Like Wakanda itself, yes. looks almost, I think it looks better than Asgard. To be the honest. fight scenes between Killmonger and just like to chant the the water fight scenes for the ceremony, yeah. the, the ceremony were great. Those oh, were so good, so colorful, so good fight scenes, like visually just a masterpiece. Yes, I would also like to say that it made me very happy to see that uh, Mbaku, the man ape made an appearance and if they ever do a second movie he's prime sus uh prime suspect to be the main bad guy because he's yeah. always been a black panther enemy uh they did uh, ryan cooler did announce or marvel announced Kevin Feige that they plan they already planned to do many many black panther sequels he said so many yeah. Whoa. that's what they said so well, hopefully uh, they don't go the way of iron man though <laughs> Uh, the speaking of those fight scenes, I thought those fight scenes are really great. They really, I do like that the camera was up close and like it kind of reminded me of the Creed fight scenes. Yep, where it's very and that's in Creed when you watch the first fight scene, it's like a one take to show you like, oh no, this we're not faking this. This is real. Um, if Michael B. Jordan got knocked out in that movie when he was filming it. <laughs> um, but in this movie too, I think like none of the fighting looks fake. Like in a lot of movies, you'd be like, oh, you can see like they cut when they're fighting. But those fight scenes, it's like really visceral and it really does like bring up the suspense because you're like oh they're not cutting away because usually a lot of those cuts are like moments for you to be like oh okay oh, okay like nothing's really no. but if you keep on the person and keep on that tension keeps rising and uh those fights mean more than him you know flipping over a car because it's like him fighting as a normal person you don't know he might lose and he does yeah. at mm-hmm. one point so uh i really did love those scenes too what do you um the only thing i saw coming though when they mentioned that that would knock out like be an EMP blast for like vibranium uh, at the, at the beginning of the movie. I was like, I bet that's coming back later. Oh yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. And I was like, All that, right. that was definite foreshadowing. Right. What part? Where they're in Shuri uh, Shuri's telling, lab. She was telling Martin Freeman's yeah. character Ross, like, oh yeah, so how it works is, is there's a temporary like, she's oh, the electromagnetic the EMP, field right, that the tracks, that yeah, shuts right. down vibraniums so it doesn't explode. Right. I was like, oh, how convenient. It yeah. turns off my brain. Uh, going back to what you're saying about the child's character, you didn't think there was any growth. I think at two parts, he did kind of grow. Like, he's learning to be king for the first time. Yeah. And he doesn't know where to bring his people. But by the end of the movie, he's like, no, we are going to help people. Like, he learns that he shouldn't, just because of tradition, have everything always be like it used to be. And when he goes to the uh, astral plane, he sees all the other kings, past kings. He tells them, you're all wrong. You've all been right. doing this wrong. Like, I'm going to do this a different way. And I think that is a moment that's great for his character, the growth being like, I am done with tradition. I'm going to do what's right. Instead. That's also a really good that they did include that because that's been a big part of the Black Panther's character, T'Challa's character, 
in all media. Yeah. And it cause, you know, it comes back and bites him in the ass a few times, but And if you think about it, like he's when his dad gets in the reason he goes, Why'd you leave that kid behind? He goes, I had to, you know, to uh I chose Wakanda. I chose Wakanda. And at the end he was like, I think at a certain point you have to do what's right rather than keep choosing Wakanda over and over again. Mm-hmm. I think it, for me it was more like you know, they were, which was, I think, a great part of the movie. They were trying to make us associate more with uh, Killmonger, like show his more of his internal demons more so than because, like, I didn't feel like there was, I mean, obviously he has struggles with this is his home and everything getting taken down. But I felt like, you know, Killmonger had more of a journey to overcome than Black Panther did in this movie. And that's why I think that's the point, isn't it, though? That that's what I just said. Nothing and, and right. That's why I'm Charles saying everything. Right. That's what they're making the point. One of my other gripes about the movie is they left out something that I think is very important is the whole journey for the heart shaped herb. Yeah. That That is a thing that in order to become the black Panther, you have to no powers available to you. You have to survive in the wilderness by yourself. No real weaponry. Uh, you have to climb the mountain, find the heart shaped herb in its natural growing state and consume it. And doesn't don't the gods also have to make sure that you're worthy. Yeah, think, that is that is also a thing. So, like, because when Suri, uh, Suri first got it, but part you know, of that is also along the lines of like going to the ancestral plane. Yeah, so that can easily be written off in that. But ancestral plane was awesome. Yes, that was really well done. Oh, I like Killmongers, pretty. where even Dad in death is actually disappointed with his decisions. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. heartbroken that when he says that thing where he's like, um, "I'm gonna, I'm." I took it like what I forgot what he says. He says something to the to the effect of like I'm gonna change everything. I'm gonna avenge you or something like that. And his dad kind of just looks down, being like, and you can tell his dad doesn't say anything, but you can tell like his dad's disappointed. Mm-hmm. And then you cut back to Eric, and he's had a tear rolling down his face because he knows too your he's dad's disappointed. disappointed. And I think that just makes him more mad. Uh, yeah, well, and he comes out of the the dream sequence screaming, yeah, and rage. ready to fight, and he's so angry, and it just shows you like a character like. If his dad was there, his dad would have taught him that. Like, if his dad was around, his dad would have taught him that. It's just the rage from his dad dying. And then now his dad disapproves of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And that furthermore cements him be like, no, like, I'm going to keep doing this. Like, um, some great things, uh, directing wise for Ryan Coogler, yep. like, uh, when Eric first becomes king and he's walking into the uh, council and the camera's upside down and it kind of turns around as a nice way to be like, that was everything's cool. messed up right, right now. Everything is flipped up. It's flipping up around like their yeah. whole world is turned upside down and it's just a cool, cool uh, shot. And it's set with, and every time Eric's on the screen, we have music from the soundtrack instead of the score. Yeah. And the child, we get more of the score, which is more traditional. And then I thought the whole, like for me at least, like writing, directing, and like even that score, like everything for that was perfect. That was, that was really great. Um, cause like Ludwig did, uh, Creed soundtrack. Yeah, and Creed's so I, awesome. I felt like you could have just mixed those two together and it would be, it would still work out pretty they, well. I, they don't have the soundtrack out for, they have the soundtrack, which is the, you know, the songs that, uh, Kendrick Lamar and uh weekend and everybody did for the movie, but not score, not the score. Really? We're looking for it. Weird. Huh? Um, which is, you know, whatever, but, um, were you guys like, I don't know. I, I, I can handle gore and like things like that or like things that are like, like nasty to look at or whatever. But when Killmonger took off his shirt for the first time and I saw those marks, I was like, ugh. Like, oh, really? Right I, I was like, I was I impressed. Cool. Yeah, that was no, cool. I, I mean, like, I was just holy like, shit. that's a lot of incision. people he's killed. It reminded me of uh, Victor's ass from right, Batman. Right, exactly. Yeah. But this is even creepier. Like, it looked like, I mean, what are those? Are they um, skin. Well, water pumped into his skin? Uh, I believe it's just scar tissue. Yeah. Awesome. I, <laughs> like, I, like, I know. I mean, I was just. I was like. I think they mentioned that he like burns himself and like it just heals over to be like that. Like it's legit. I mean, he goes. You know, I've I've killed a lot of people. Boom. That, I mean, it's all over his chest, all over his arms. That fight scene was so good. I was like, holy crap! You're going to kill T'Challa and get to end when he does kill other people. I kept waiting to watch him. You know, burn in a new one. Like, I, hey, le- he doesn't do that. You're right. He was legit, and I was. Hey, he's Black Panther at that point. But they turns the black pants. I mean, at that, yeah, I guess at that point, like, I'm a king. I don't need to keep tabs anymore. It was probably to show when he did get to go up against T'Challa or whoever the king of Wakanda was. Like, this is who I've killed to get to you, and now I'm going to kill you. Are we in agreement that the last gem that they haven't found is a soul gem, and that's Correct. what was in the garden? I didn't know it was in the garden. Well, because there was multiple. I don't know if that's. But like, if it's in the center and it's like growing, she got that part on of the, the soil. edge. She I know, but if it's in the soil and it's making the plants, I think. I was assuming because well, otherwise, like, why is Thanos coming to Wakanda? He's coming there for a reason. It has to be somewhere there. 
Well, what if what, now? This is looking to the future. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. In the, the soil, soil itself, it in the soil center, rich, and that's what's fueling. Oh, the plants. okay. That okay. I thought you were saying the one that they picked. No, I was no. like, nah. No oh, way. I was assuming. No, he's I, not eating soil. Right, and I was like, what dirt. I is. I was a good idea. I like. Now, that. what if it was uh, like Adam Warlock in the future comes down here? That's why I assume. But it's going to be the next movie. They don't have time to set up Adam Warlock. Why They're isn't not, Why isn't he going to just show up to Earth? No. Who? What are you talking about? Oh, Adam. Adam. But no, Thanos comes to Wakanda. Yeah, what if we Adam? He's like, hey guys, <laughs> he I'm shows here. up. Then Thanos just shows up. Holy shit! <laughs> That's a lot of writing you got to do to get there. <laughs> I heard there is a rumor. I can't remember. Like someone told me that there is a scene in the trailer for Infinity War that he has got claw marks. Thanos does across his face. <laughs> so I think Black Panther's gonna get some action on Thanos when he goes to Wakanda. My, I, I'm still excited to watch uh, Iron Man get punched in the face, man, <laughs> and then go down Everybody like a ragdoll. Wants to see that. I like Iron Man, but still, everyone <laughs> wants to see that. <laughs> I think if you watch Civil War and watch this, like Black Panther, like his like heroness, like his like badassness stays the same, or if not, gets better because yes. like he is very ferocious and yeah, he's just really badass. I d- guilty pleasure. I really loved Killmonger's Black Panther suit because it still had the uh, leopard spots. Wasn't that so- T'Chaka's suit because it was the gold one? No, it's one that. She made no, for she, him. She, uh, Shuri had made a couple of different. Oh, versions. she, she made the there, two there suits. The and he was like, "That's too flashy." That T'Challa was using originally in Civil oh. War. Then there were the two necklaces, and I really liked it because the gold one is more or less a reference to, at least somewhere in the comic lines. That was one of my favorite of his. That's what I was saying. I thought in the beginning of the movie, T'Chaka's was gold. No, uh, his necklace so. is gold. Yes, but it's not that suit. It's that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's a new suit, suit that Shuri made. Okay. The, the whole. Yeah, you never had that technology. And you're right. I, I noticed that oh. too with the 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 leopard spots during their fight scene at the end. Because it's, it's got mouth. He's got a mouth of like teeth and stuff, and then he's got spots up and, around yeah. his shoulders. I yeah, like, and I wanted to I wanted to bring that to light because as as he absorbed the kinetic force from the fight, that became more apparent. Yep. And I might have been reading too deeply into it, but it made me think of uh, there was a time in the comic books where Black Panther was known as the Black Jaguar. Oh, because. At the time, the Black Panther Party yeah. was a thing, <clears throat> and probably still is. But Black Panther was w- first, though, and then yes. they took and then the, the name, and then the party came along, yeah. and then and they, they, they wanted to, to separate. It. Yeah, they didn't want to be associated with the party, <laughs> so he switched over to the Black Jaguar. And then Marvel was like, "Hey, I know Marvel fans were like, just make it the Black Panther," and they're like, mm-hmm. "Okay, yeah." So it's just they, one of those they in the comic too for that. Um. I'm not sure. It's part of that documentary. If you go back and uh, no, we've been talking about for weeks, right. the secret history of really? comics. They talk about that. Huh. Um, I mean, they they had people of the KKK and Black Panther comics. Right. Yeah, <laughs> well, actually, they, you know, that came from. They talk about that too. Is that uh, Marvel? The heads of Marvel were like, "Hey, Stanley, you got to put more wh- white people." In this I saw book. that article. And so he's like, "Okay, I'm going to put the KKK." In the <laughs> <book>. <laughs> he's going to fight them. <laughs> it's like, okay, Same. makes sense. Um, I did like what the movie ended, where they're going to be more part of the world. He he went to Oakland and said, uh, "We're going to open up a couple of schools here in the same that building. building, and about that building, yeah. and about that building, the same building cool. that his uncle died in is going to be turned into like the headquarters, basically for that research lab." So it seems like. Maybe the next couple of movies, or at least maybe the next movie, it'll be, uh, which I don't know, either way is fine, but I did like Wakanda a lot, but it's probably going to be more world-based about like yeah. trying to save the world. Not save the world, but save their people within the world, so. Um, I That kind of was funny, though, like how they end the movie, like they're in, is it New York, probably? I don't know where they're at. What like, was the town? Oakland. Oakland, 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 sorry. Um, but then, like, in the mid credit <laughs> scene, she's in, uh, they're back in Wakanda. I'm like, man, they travel fast in Wakanda. I is you know the nice thing about this movie is that they had all these special gadgets and yeah they they gave you a little hey this is what it does but like when they stick in the um that ball into Freeman's back mm-hmm. there's never oh this is gonna stop everything this is gonna help you it's just like it's done we don't have to tell you about it don't have to explain it to you we get you back we fix you up that's I mean there's it, it, well, he does say this will help stabilize him for right. now yeah but it, it's not this big deep you know logic thing it's I, I was cool with it not making that's, sense it's just doing its yeah, thing yeah that's what I was going to say like all the technology they, they never try to explain like oh what like they say yeah you have vibranium that's what it that's it yep. but they don't mm-hmm. see how it works or anything like that and I think that's fine even Martin Freeman when he wakes up he's just like oh okay you guys got vibranium here <laughs> Now that you just like, reminded me, those Black Panther gauntlets that shoot yeah. beams out of them. That's cool. I want one. <laughs> um, I loved Claw's hand. That was sweet yeah, that was too. Cool that too. was. A, I've seen so many things where they've just made him look absolutely stupid. Because you know that's part of what his character name came from was yeah. that fake hand, yeah. which sometimes is an actual claw. Or In Avengers Two, what did he have? An arm. 
He had his actual he arm. Just added, he lost it to, Vol- to Ultron. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they, he rips okay. off his arm. Laser beams his arm off. Once a week, goes, I watch it, I forget. And then apologizes because, you know, why is Ultron the He's like, oh, relief? oh, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that really, that's, that was my big it sucks. about it. We were talking about movie. that movie. It sucks that Claw was introduced in that movie because it makes him seem like a joke until you see this movie and you're like, oh, okay, I guess this guy really is a threat. And then it sucks that I, th- I think at least like I felt like this movie should have came out and then he should have been in Civil War. Um, but it obviously doesn't work out logistically. But right. I do like that like this establishes him. And when you go back and watch Civil War, it just seems like a side character kind of like, oh, OK. So well, maybe it's better. That and, way, and to be, maybe and to be honest, outside of the Black Panther series, he really kind of is a side character bad guy. He's really good in New Avengers from John Hickman. But yeah, I think We're you're talking right. about Black Panther or Claw. Black Panther. Claw. Well, okay. I was. I was oh, talking, you're talking about I was talking Claw. Claw. I was saying, is, I was saying we get two different good. conversations. Yeah. There's a bad guy and there's a good guy. But why? Why is he bad and why is he good? Oh, Claw. Yeah, he's just a side character. But yeah. I mean, like Black Panther. Like, um, yeah. Oh, what we were talking about before we start recording. At the end, it says thank you too, and it says all these comic book people. Which I was like, okay, yeah, I understand. Jack Lee, Stan Kirby. Yes, you have. Uh, I think Christopher Priest is on there. I think there are a lot of people who have written Black Panther, and then it was like Jonathan Hickman. I was like, wait a second here. I'm pretty sure he only wrote Avengers: New Avengers. And I don't remember anything in that movie that has to do with that run. Uh, but it must be just like the uh, there mu- Yeah, there must be something about the mythos. Like, yeah, exactly. It's well, maybe there's Hickman's maybe, maybe very it's science a, oriented. a future thank you to Jonathan Hickman. They're using uh, Thane from the Dark Order. They're gonna be, not Thane. Yes, yeah, so I say in Infinity War when they say thank you, Jonathan Hickman. Yes, when he beats because the shit somebody, Infinity yes. War is mostly if, if you've heard about the news from that, it's mostly based on his Infinity event um, and Infinity Gauntlet. They kind of mix the two up, but. Um, so that's that's gonna make sense, but yeah. I don't know. I saw that. And I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, I want. I realize that's one of my catchphrases. I tell you what. I actually want to read a little bit more Black Panther. Like yeah, this, this movie made me more excited. Going, I Get like the, this. Um, I like this world. Rise of the Black Panther has been good. It's about his origin. It's it's like quick pace because it's only gonna be like five issues. I think no three. No, six. I thought it was six. Mm, well, who knows? Um, it's written by <laughs> still trying to write. It's written by Tan Hisi Coates right now, and he's done. He's he's, hasn't he done a Black Panther prose novel now? Yes, he did. He yeah. did one for kids, and right. he's a writer for the Atlantic, and his articles are great. Before I, he I became, watched a special on him, like way before this movie was coming out. Before he even started write wrote, uh, wrote Black Panther, I was reading his columns because he talks about comic books a lot. So I, and then he was going to write that book, and I was like, oh, cool. And I did like it when I was reading it, but it is very political. It is very slow paced, and so I want to read it in trades. So, but it's it was good what I read of it, and the arts by uh, Larf Fleece, right, which is pretty great. So. <clears throat> Yeah, that cover looked good, and I can tell that's like the ancestral plan on one of those covers. Like it's got like the rainbowish sky background thing, kind and of for almost the, the aurora type, thing. right? Yeah, yeah the aurora really aurora. Kind of always thing. twilight. Yeah. Type. So I'm definitely, yeah, I'm with you. I'm more intrigued with the character. Um, you know, some of us have a Marvel Unlimited uh, subscription, so I might have to go back and read some that. stuff. Huh? We offered it to this guy. I could read it. I could use it. <laughs> Says who? Would you pay <laughs> for the one, the, like the one time I'm yeah, going to use it? it. <laughs> uh, I think though, if you're going to this movie, expecting it to be the uh, preamble, uh, not the preamble, the penultimate story before, I guess it technically is before Infinity War, but like the lead up to it to be like, oh, here's where we're going to get some stuff that leads into it. Nothing yeah. really happens. No, no, no. So don't expect Thanos to, like show up at the end of the movie. Even though that would be cool, that would be cool because that's. How it happens in Infinity, but um, well, wait, this you had mentioned this before. This is messed up production schedule. Yeah, it was supposed to come out before Thor. Before Thor, so Thor was going to be your lead in because there was some mid credit yeah, or something. Thor, in Thor that led up to the Infinity War. So the ship shows up, yeah, so. right? Because so. this was supposed to be in what November, and then Thor was supposed to be now. Yeah, yeah. they pushed it back for Spider Man because it originally was supposed to be Thor, where Spider Man is, and then Black Panther, and then nothing until Avengers, and then. They were like, oh, we got Spider-Man. They're like, push everything back. We'll put that in the summer slot. Mm-hmm. So everything got pushed back. You got Thor in November. And you had this movie coming out here, which actually I think is great. There's like nothing out right now. Right. Uh, I've been but waiting I, I, for... A, but I do think the other way around would have been a better choice. No, I didn't. Yeah, that, 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 that was the I know. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying that... It, yeah. Set up. I just think culturally, like it's Black it's uh, Black History Month. It's uh, there's people have been waiting for this movie. I think right now it has a great impact. It's making. I have been. <laughs> it's, it's like it made two. It's making two hundred thousand, two hundred yeah. million dollars this weekend. So it's it's made, made the most million on Thursday. Yeah, it made uh, the most advanced sales ever for a Marvel. Movie. Most, I think it broke all the records. Uh, more than it sold because Wonder Woman had the record before in February. So now this movie does. She came out in February. That's what I was reading in newspaper. Well, I, I don't remember. Deadpool that. had the best. No, Wonder Woman came out in the summer. Well, She's June. These articles I read are wrong. Well, then they're wrong because Deadpool <laughs> I thought had the biggest grossing in February. Yeah, for Deadpool's been eclipsed. For radar. Yeah, for radar. radar. Yeah. 
Um, but then we have leading up, yes, we have Infinity uh, War in Mar- uh, May. So nothing connects the two. But did it make you kind of like be like, I'm back in this kind of thing? Because I, because f- yeah. Thor was so different. And I actually do think this movie is a lot different. I, you know, going into this movie, a lot of people were like, "This really doesn't feel like a Marvel movie." And I, I know what they're saying now because it's more, it's very political, it's very a uh, story about uh, race and culture and everything like that. So it does feel like, "Well, this is a superhero movie." And then you get obviously you get fight scenes with that are in Black Panther suits. So you're like, "Oh, okay." Um, and like we said, there's barely any connection to any other uh, story that's been going on. But did it amp you up for to see Infinity War, or is that just separate? Just like oh, it's a uh, for me, it was separate. I was already amped to see Infinity War for separate reasons. That I mean, let's face it, we've been build, building up for ten years to watch Thanos either beat the shit out of the Avengers or the Avengers to beat the shit out of him. I'm guessing the uh, first one's going to happen. I think on purpose. I noticed this for the trailers right before the movie. They did not show Infinity War trailer. They did showed it? all the other Marvel ones, mm-hmm. and I'm like. That's weird, but then as I thought about it, I'm like, I think they're trying to keep this as separated from that as possible because they don't want that to eclipse the story we're actually embracing. So, kudos. I mean, if anyone's got a great marketing team, that's definitely Disney and slash yes. Marvel. So they they know what they're doing. But I mean, the Ant Man trailer. I'm excited for that. Like, I think you know this Marvel universe shines when you get the more the lesser known popular characters like. To some extent. I mean, it's yeah, fun I, It's I fun taking different corners that. of the universe and really giving them their limelight. Or, or maybe not even less popular, but just ones that aren't normally by themselves, like Ant-Man, right. who generally was always just Avengers. Right. Yeah. Same with Wasp, or to some extent, Black Panther even. Black Panther, yeah, he debuts in a different book. Like he's always he's, He was originally in Fantastic Four. And he's, you know, he's a guy that... When he goes to challenge him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So he, like, shows up in somebody else's book before he... So it is nice to see, like, I guess he, in a way... In this universe, too, showed up in Civil War, so like he didn't debut to challenge somebody. (laughs) To challenge somebody, Um, not originally. To me, that felt right, actually. Yeah, so like that's how he came in, and then you're kind of like, who's this guy? And by the way, in that movie, oh, that's all. That's another grape I had. That's all another grape. So she gives him the sneakers, where she's like, oh, you got to be stealthy. He's never stealthy the rest of that movie. Nope. He's like always like barging in and and, uh, kicking ass, but in Civil War, very stealthy. Um, Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have those boots. So well, I think the one thing though is that in. like when they go to the casino, he wanted to be stealthy. And uh, what's the general? I don't remember what the general's name was. Michonne kind of ruins that. Um, I've been made. I think that guy just came over to yell at her. So then she stabbed him and beat the shit out of him. So <laughs> well, she kind of well, ruined Well, she really that. wanted to get out of that wig. <laughs> then she throws out the other guy. I mean, I love that scene. That, that, was good that scene, scene was, cool. was amazing. Was and it's fun to see Claw's power. Sorry. Maybe yeah, no, off. Yeah, but you I'll actually sh- get to see Claw not just do his little sonic boom. It's here's this giant ass gun that my hand turns into. What did uh, I thought that was really funny? He had the he had the vibranium head of the uh, hammer in wrapping paper. What did it say on there? Fragile, fragile. 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 Yeah, that was fragile. that was awesome. Fragile on vibranium. Oh, I died. hilarious. What did yeah. he say when he shot uh, T'Challa with the gun? And he starts laughing. He when he says to the guard, "I made it rain." Oh, okay. oh yeah, I made it rain. I made it rain, and then the guard's like, "All right, let's go." Oh, and also he was super hilarious in the movie, but also like you don't know what he's going to do, so he's also kind of he scary. seems crazy. When the, he's like, oh, what are you, a rapper from up to Entourage? He goes, yeah, I, I want well, my leak on SoundCloud. You just made me laugh so much. Uh, yeah. By the way. Please don't make no. me listen to your music. <laughs> uh, we're not on SoundCloud anymore, so we'll go there for our show. <laughs> um, I don't my board, so I don't know how to end the show. I don't know what we get to talk about. Can we give our yeah. final rating? Yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, I'm final not. rating. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, Kyle, what do you think? Out of 10, what do you get to play? Out of 10, I would... Mm, I'm a little biased. I would probably give it somewhere in like nine. Because... Like I said, it's not perfect. There, were, I even I saw things of in like CGI, uh, specifically like Black Panther when he was fighting the rhinos. It's like you look kind of like Gumby here. He looks like if you're seeing Matrix Unloaded when Neo's fighting all those uh, Smiths in that courtyard, and he eventually turns into like yeah, like this elastic kind of man. Yeah, I was there, like, that's what? what's going on here. Yeah, that 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 made me twitch a bit. But I didn't feel he was nearly as fast as he is in Civil War. Like in Civil War, when he's chasing Bucky down the street. He's, you know, kind of just jogging, dodging this firepower. Which you're kind of right, because he's on a motorcycle, and he gets him, catches up by foot. Yeah, he just runs And in the movie, he's like, hey, give me a car so I can ride on top of yeah. it. But oh, that He did also sprint up the side of a building, though. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Also. Like, and Spider-Man. he just got done with the fight. Maybe he's winded. He just got shot with that. Well, thing. So he just got <laughs> laser beamed. So yeah, That would have gave me chills if I saw Black Panther, like, sprinting down. I think he's a little scarier of- than Batman. I think a part of it is that you can't see underneath his nose. Yeah. You can't see that it's a human. It's like, holy shit, that's a monster. Plus, Batman's got that cape. No, yeah. nobody's scared of that cape. So. Dude, that <laughs> Alex, what do you think out of 10? Uh, probably an 8. Like, it was it was really good. 
And I actually talking to you guys made me enjoy this movie more. It's like you guys are pointing out things that I may have missed or been a little more critical than I should have been. It was a really good movie. I did enjoy what it. What did your wife think of the movie? She liked it. Yeah. Um, she. It, I think the only thing she didn't like was the the change in the music, but it didn't occur to me that it's when Killmonger's on. Yeah, it's only it's when more he's of the, on, yeah. the ramp stuff. It's kind of being it's like tradition versus cultural. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, talk, you guys pointed out, I was like, oh, that's actually a clever idea. The bad guy has more of this obscene music. And the the good guys supposed to have the culture. Good soundtrack, get it. I actually thought about getting it. It's good. Actually. If you can find it, or I mean, at least the score. no, the score's out yeah. there, but the soundtrack's out there. Right. <laughs> I've been listening to it for like two weeks. <laughs> um, I also give it an eight out of ten. Um, very good movie. I I know I told you all my gripes with it, um, but I think that you know just my ability not to connect with the main hero and like I didn't really see his thing as more of a journey. I saw him more of reacting, but the supporting cast, holy crap. You killed it. What a great movie. I mean, yeah. I I can't wait to see another sequel just to get these characters back to see some, see them do some more, especially oh. if they did reshoots in Infinity War. I did like in this movie um, a lot because it's part of the actual like comics and stuff like that, that the women warriors and like there's the women are in power. Like they don't never treat them like, oh, you're just like my sister. He's yeah. like, he trusts her as much as he trusts anybody else. He has his general. He trusts her too. And so it's not only a movie about, you know, kind of like black culture, but also it's like that women – in this movie are not waiting on guys to save them. But most of the time they save him. So like, yep. That's well, it. and that's what the Dora Milaje are supposed to do. They're bodyguards. Yeah. As well as possible future wives and such. But that was one of the parts I really liked in the movie was the four Dora Milaje versus Killmonger. Yeah. It was cool. And they were not afraid to die nope. for their country. And, that's one of them did it. You're right. Yeah. One and of them. they were more or less standing toe to toe with him for a little bit. Well, the only reason he got out of it was his suit kept absorbing their attack. Yeah. And he blew him away. If he didn't have the suit on, they, they probably would have beat him. Uh, Explain one thing to me. Yeah. Um, in the first fight for the ceremony, every time either is it Mabaku? Mbaku. Mbaku and T'Challa, when they fall down, the bodyguards would move up. So it's every time someone falls, they force it's in the like circle. Kind of like a time limit. It, 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 I, that's what I took it for is they're just incre- you know like this thing the, has the dragged stakes, on forever the stakes are getting <laughs> bigger okay. yeah hey we, we weren't expecting there to actually be a challenge oh well now we have one you yeah. brought your armed guards we'll have ours I think it's part of the tradition to be like there's a time limit on this thing like, you guys come they didn't do that for the second but, then, but, then was, that, but that's what it was then was that the bodyguards from M'Baku were there mm-hmm. and that yeah so the other guys the, the team was there to back him up in case they cheated the second time no the second time he was like it'll take weeks to gather but he's like I don't need nobody I just need T'Challa and that's why they weren't okay, ready for it. It wasn't like right. actually. I love Killmonger in this movie. So yeah. good. Michael oh, B. Jordan. He, was, I, 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 he, he just proves to you how bad that Fantastic Four movie was. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I was going to say. He's so one, great. I was telling one of the guys at work, I was thinking, Killmonger really was one of the one of the best villains and just makes me like Michael B. Jordan way you more. You ever seen Creed? No. You need watch to watch no. it. I feel like as long as Ryan Coogler makes movies, Michael B. Jordan will be in there in some form or fashion. I hope he, so. He's been in every single of his movies so far. No, two movies. Three. three. <laughs> All three. <laughs> uh, I guess movie at nine, too. The only thing it was a CGI. Um, uh, it, it just took me out of the movie. Everything else was like I was so engrossed in the movie, and then I would get, like you said, Gumby, and then I'd be like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. what's going on here? <laughs> that, yeah. Which is weird, because when they're fighting on that track, it looks fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then when it's out, like outside. It, it, it's, the, it's the high-speed, bouncing-type yeah. attack stuff that and when it's, it's all bleh, bleh, bleh. It might have been the lighting too because when they're outside it's like you could tell more that it was like oh stuff. yeah i suppose yeah. like bright light. oh also martin freeman was good in this movie but he was like the only thing if you like other marvel movies he was the most marvel of the movie like yeah. he was yeah. the most like the, the the humor he had like all that stuff that was like oh okay this is like that's marvel humor the rest of the movies not really <laughs> like that i did like his scenes uh being the pilot um for like you know taking down the uh, Wakandan ships, like bringing vibranium to the world and whatnot. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Like even, like you know, you you could tell like there's animosity. Like you know, no one completely trusts each other. And then he's like, "Screw it! Like I'll, I'm willing to die for this cause." So I thought yeah, that was that pretty was, special. I don't remember did he die or not? No, no, he, no, he did. No, he, but he was willing to. Yeah, he, he got out before they right. Blew this, up this, thing. The, this window or whatever got down to like fifteen percent. And he got out integrity, yeah. and then he got the last ship, and then booked it. I like that this movie didn't have it be where. Um, Black Panther u- loses his, his cool suit and then he has to go use his old suit and then somehow overpower the new suit. It's actually sure he just takes the old the newer suit with her and just gives it to him. It's not a, oh, here's this old, old suit that you're going to go get the shit kicked out. Oh, you don't like and nostalgia? I do. I like that other suit. I like the original suit. looks good. But it was kind of like watching Iron Man where Iron Man uses an old suit and then somehow has to win against this newer, mm-hmm. neater yeah. suit. 
Uh, the ceremonial Black Panther armor, very cool too. Like the mask, I mean. Yeah. That was sweet. Oh, I was yeah, like, I like oh that, that was cool. So, uh, yeah, the, and the ape right. armor and that. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Average yeah. rating 8.5 out of 10 from this group. I think that is like a go see it. Um, especially if you're if you're into these movies, you already seen it. I don't know yeah. why we're not trying to convince you. I'm trying to convince the person that's like, oh, I don't need to see this one. I think you do. But if you're hoping for Easter eggs for Infinity War, no, you're no. not getting anything except no. for the end. But it is the self? No, not even movie, the end. Which is nice. What in well, the end? Know, well, okay, I guess Bucky the one the thing, thing. Yeah, barely. That barely counts. Uh, yeah, not really. Because yeah. just show you that he's there. But it, for me, forgetting that he was there, I was like, <laughs> oh, he's there. And I was like, yeah, oh, I'd, for, I'd forgotten about that too. Well, at least you know he's on Frozen. I think the bigger thing would have been is that they would have had Captain show up in this. And he also be in this tent, but he's out, you know, what also proves throwing to you, frisbee somewhere. Yeah, well, it also proves to you that T'Challa wanted to solve this with people from Wakanda rather than, because if we know, like, Captain's probably around there somewhere. Uh, like you said, he might be out. Trying you know, to get drunk. Uh, like yeah. a satellite <laughs> village, but he's around there somewhere, so if he really didn't need his help, he could have went, hey, Captain, I need your help. But he's like, oh, this is our fight, and we'll figure it out. Um, Good. Uh, Wednesday comics 605 at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Wednesday comics, Alex at Alex Mastralis, or usually to my right at Garat2188. Me, I'm at, at Marvin underscore. So do you want someone to contact you? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> follow me on Facebook. I got nothing. <laughs> Facebook.com slash Wednesday comics podcast. You can find us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher radio, Google play and Spotify. Um, God, See, this why I need that. Oh, 605 215 1849. I believe is a voicemail. Let us know. Uh, are you excited for Infinity War? I'm sure you are, but let me know out of 10 how excited you are. And uh, go to YouTube. You can find us on YouTube and watch uh, these two on the gauntlet every Wednesday. Garrett on Catching Up with the Garrett whenever it comes out. That's a little sneak peek. Uh, I'm not sneak peek, but that's a little surprise whenever it comes out. Oh. And uh, you can find the show there too. Also, if you like, some people I do, I saw do like listening to the show just on YouTube. So, because if you have YouTube Red, you can listen to the audio. So, yeah, Supercon, um, Supercon 2018, Return of the Con. That's September 28th, 29th, and 30th. Wednesday Comics doing a live show that Friday night. We'll be doing a live show, and then we have uh, bringing Phil Hester to the show, right? Ooh, Garrett? Phil Hester, yeah, baby. Uh, watch Garrett talk about him on this week's Catching Up with Garrett. He did the art for Batman Beyond, and um, more things there. Like I said, get that weekend pass. Only thirty bucks. That's not bad. Uh, so roots of the swamp thing.com go there and see our guest from last week him talk about actually he talks about their winter special he wrote up something a little bit what we we're talking about but also the uh, young monsters in love he talks about it there too so you hey did that. you get that uh not yet not i yet. am gonna get it though okay uh if you wait a month dc drops that price um <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'd get it for uh threw me off roots of the swamp thing.com go there and, and go follow him on uh twitter to dc world swampy or on facebook at facebook.com slash roots of the swamp thing uh, Alex, we got a book club coming up, right? We do. Wednesday Comics probably presents The Leave of Extraordinary Gentle People. Oh, I screwed that up. Whatever. You're a fucker. <laughs> <laughs> the Wednesday Comics Leave of Extraordinary Gentle People probably presents. There you go. Day Tripper, written by Fabio Ba. Nope. Fabio. No. Fabio See? Moon. See? Yeah, you fucked me over for too. Whatever. Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. Uh, we've been talking about that the first uh, Thursday in April. April. So by that Wednesday, send in your voicemails, emails, and Twitters. Tweet. Uh, call that. I, w- I was thinking about reading that on Valentine's Day. I was like, ah, that's probably like <laughs> Make double you kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You'll yeah, wish Cupid read- would have shot you. I wouldn't read that on a Valentine's Day. There, it's not only about we talked about before. There's some father son stuff in there. It is about also relationships. So good call there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, ain't got time for that. There's something else you had me write the board last week. Thing. And I can't remember what it was. Well, that was the iTunes thing. I remember that. Okay. Mm, who knows. I'm sure I've said it before. Go back and listen to our shows. They're all archived there. If you're on Spotify, uh, thank you for listening. I know you like those forecasts. Uh, listen to the main show also. That's where we talk about books, reviews, and reviews for movies. And sometimes we play a game that Garrett makes called Image Bowl. Image Comics Super Bowl. Oh, okay. Thank you. Return of the Mac. What is it called? Return of the Mac. I didn't call it that. <laughs> Mac, uh, Mach 2? Mach 2. That's right. Uh, go there. So, Rick, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that show. Uh, great movie. I liked it a lot. Um, who, like I said, Infinity War is coming up. I'm excited for that. May. May's going to be a stacked month. We got that movie. We got Deadpool, which I can before the, we started recording. And then uh, Solo. Uh, obviously, Solo is probably the lowest on that list for me. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I watched that preview and I was like, I have no interest. That is not. Not, not even that I don't like Star Wars. I just have no interest to see that movie because it doesn't look good. Keaton, we tried to bring in a Rogue One. That one I think because you were like Solo. I can I'm watch like, that for free on stay Netflix. Home. Rogue One is good. Solo. <laughs> God, home. when you got Ron Howard in are, there. Okay, are you even going to go see? No, I want to see. I'm going to go see Oh, yeah, I'm going to see it. Uh, Lana Carissian's in. I got to right. see it. Yeah. 
But is it going to be if, no if there's uh, doubt it if there's a first flop for Star Wars unless you count the prequel trilogy? I mean, I guarantee you, it's the number four. They know it's not going to be good. That's why, like, it's, it's literally Avengers. Two weeks later, it's Deadpool, and a week later, it's Solo. They're putting it up against those two movies. People are still going to be seeing those two movies. They want people to forget about it. They just want it to be like, oh, hey, in the month of May, we made this amount of money. Uh, being like, yeah, that's ninety eight percent Avengers, but like Solo still at two percent. I think they didn't, weren't planning on. They didn't. They wanted the original direction of Solo come out and it was not going to go the way they wanted to through like let's just get this fucking done and get to the next you know what I find funny about that movie um, one last second before we leave that they hired uh, Phil Lord and um, Chris Ka- Miller Chris Miller and then they fired them and uh, Kathleen Kennedy said oh yeah those those guys what they don't understand is they're doing too much improv and like for this kind of movie we need to be on track but that's what they do like, they are literally doing round robin storytelling for the episodic movies they've been they've been <laughs> But Phil, uh, Lord and Miller, all their movies are improv. So why did they hire them? No. Yeah. It's like they went out and seek them. were like, hey, we like your movies. And they didn't but do don't any make research. Them your movie. They didn't research enough to be like, oh, how do you film? Like, how's your style? And uh, so that's where they got the classic paint by numbers, Ron Howard. So uh, here we go with Ron Howard. Oh, God. It's gonna we'll be... see how it is. Hey, I want to ask. Now, I know I'm putting you on the spot, Marvin. Yes, Joey. Your, your top three Marvel movies then. I know we're. I know. No, no, no. I know we're. I know. We're going to do top show. one time. That's all the show. I'm just doing top three. Top three? I can't even remember three. Okay. Guardians 2, you liked. Winter Soldier, this. I don't like Guardians 2. I didn't like Guardians 2. Yes, yeah, you said you loved Guardians 2. That's in your top five. Who said that? Doctor Strange was. You said that. Winter Soldier. Here we go. I swear to God, he said that. Winter Soldier. Yes, he did. Right in a rock. Winter Soldier, Avengers, Black Panther. No way. That changed from the last time you made this list. Raiden Rock was number one right after you said that, Raiden Rock. I don't think you so. You are a liar. <laughs> I don't think so. He's lying the whole time. Yeah. Every time he sees a new movie, he's like, number one. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's why I said top three is number one. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's it, comics? I've been Marvin. I've been Alex. I've been Gary. I'm Kyle. Hey, everyone. Keep turning those pages.